State Champs Game Time Live is delivered by Hungry Howie's Pizza, celebrating 50 years of flavor. State Champs Game Time Live is also brought to you by Lawrence Technological University. Be curious, make magic. The future of education begins at ltu.edu. Alta Equipment, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider, proudly representing the industry's top brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time with Alta Equipment. The Construction Association of Michigan, the voice of the construction industry in Michigan. U.S. Navy, transform your life and become part of something bigger. Learn more about naval careers at Navy.com. And the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. All right, we're four weeks into the Michigan high school football season. Let's turn up the heat a little bit. An old Catholic League rivalry renewed on a perfect Friday night for ball. It's Orchard Lake St. Mary's visiting the Shamrocks of Detroit Catholic Central. Welcome onto the field, another week of Game Time Live. Evan Stockton with the Grand Perry's coming along in just a second. And we hear from Elizabeth Kuhn on the sidelines as well. If any of you watching this game have been intimately involved in the Catholic League, like Grant Perry and I have, you know these programs are all about tradition. And Grant, we've got a chance tonight to highlight a couple of guys who have come home to coach their alma maters. Justin Sasante in year number one for Detroit Catholic Central, and Jermaine Gonzalez in year number two for Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Every single chance they get to coach these boys has got to be a little bit bizarre and out of their mind's eye because they're really living out dreams all over again. Yeah, and it goes back to when they're playing days. They both had the opportunity to play against each other uh, when they were at high school, in high school. You know, Coach Gonzalez played at, at St. Mary's and then you know, Coach Desante played at Catholic Central. So there's a little bit of uncooked beef, quote unquote, in this rivalry today um, that they're going to settle on the field today. Both teams bring a really good uh, type of tempo on offense and defensive play hard. Uh, so it's going to be a really good one. Coach Gonzalez played for the legendary George Port and Justin Sasanti, of course, for the great. Tom Mack. As for the Catholic Central Shamrocks this year, they're coming in at 2-1. and one. And you probably remember those Tom Mack teams, tight T, 36 wham, running the ball all over the place. Grant, they still want to do that, but also under the direction of quarterback Bo Jackson, they can throw a darn well if they have to, too. Yeah, they can in your flow. And St. Mary's is just a click off, right? You know, they lost a, a couple games here early on to some really good teams uh, and then they found a win uh, along the way as well. So today they got a big test against Catholic Central. It's league play. Uh, you got to bring your A game in league play. You can't leave it at the you know at home. Uh, so I expect St. Mary's to try to click today offensively. They got a lot of playmakers on the edges. Look for them to get those guys involved and try to play a really well-balanced game today. Generations of Eaglets and Shamrocks have battled on football fields for a very long time. They do it again tonight. St. Mary's and Catholic Central coming up next. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. 
At Hungry Howie's, we're famous for flavor. And this is our chief flavor officer. Every hour of every day, our CFO obsesses over the tastiest ingredients, combining them to create new flavor combinations your taste buds never knew they needed until now. Introducing his latest master pizza, the Bee Sting. Hot honey drizzle, classic cup pepperoni, and spicy jalapenos, or any two toppings. And our famous flavored crust. It's all the buzz. Hungry? Howie! From our very first breath, curiosity is why we question everything through barrages of whys and how comes. It now needs the tools to will its vision into existence. Tools that will forever allow curiosity to obscure the line between technology and magic. Be curious, make magic. Lawrence Technological University. At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Senebogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Looking for a score, a schedule, a story? MHSAA.com has you covered. Our newly redesigned website has everything you need to follow high school sports in Michigan. And it's optimized for mobile use. Fans can submit scores on a Friday night, check playoff pairings and game times, or read about the student athletes from your community. Your first stop is MHSAA.com. Connect with us online and get everything you need all in one place. Back at Catholic Central on a perfect night for football. Middle of September, the sun is setting. High 70s, feels a little warmer than that as the sun beats down on this Friday night. Catholic League matchup on the way. Orchard Lake, St. Mary's, and Detroit Catholic Central for the 35th time all time. Down to the side, Rock Marching Band on the field. The Shamrocks will be in the familiar Valiant Blue jerseys, but no peerless white pants they are wearing. When it is in the season, they finally put it all together and, and play a complete football game. And it starts with just playing complimentary football on both sides of the ball, and especially all three phases, special teams, defense, and offense. Uh, you know, St. Mary's ran into some issues early on with, with self-inflicting wounds, you know, some turnovers. That Rochester's Adams game, they, they've lost 22-8, to eight, but gave up two defensive touchdowns. So if they don't, you know, inflict themselves with those, you know, those, uh, you know turnovers, they might have won that game. And then, then De La Salle, they were in that game. They were fighting. They made some really impressive plays. Uh, you know, but De La Salle just kind of took it away at the end and, and forced some turnovers there. So, again, uh, and especially talking with Coach Gonzalez, it's an emphasis on no turnovers today. So if both these teams can get the ball moving and have good, fluid drives and get everyone involved and, and create opportunities in the pass game and the run game, I think we're in for a good game tonight, Evan. Usually is pretty darn good when Orchard Lake St. Mary's and Detroit Catholic Central lock horns on gorgeous Friday nights like this. Four weeks into the year, and it's finally getting real. Catholic League battle between Catholic Central and St. Mary's. Marching band out on the field, and we will pause for our national anthem. Led by Captain Central Principal Father Patrick Fulton. On this summer appreciation night, I'd like to extend a welcome to our faithful supporters, as well as a welcome to our brothers in faith from Orchard Lake St. Mary's. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God, our Creator, who brings us together as your people, send your blessing on all of us here tonight. Bless our athletes in their competition. Keep everyone safe in your care. Give us your gracious spirit that we may respect our school, school Shamrock Marching Band and honor America with the playing of our national anthem.
no one can hit the high note in the national anthem like the Catholic Central student section. Shamrocks in the royal blue with the gray pants. St. Mary's in the white with the silver numbers and the flying St. Mary's M on their red helmets. Catholic Central slated to get the football first, coming off a 48-7 win on the road at St. Francis de Sales down in Toledo last Friday night. They actually trailed in that ball game 7-0 early, and then they ripped off the final 48 points on their way to a 41-point win. As for Orchard Lake St. Mary's, a 47-21 loss last week against Warren D. LaSalle, two-time defending state champs at the Division II level. But positives to take away for the Eaglets last week. Most points that they've scored in a game this year, aside from their 28-7 win over St. John's Jesuit from Toledo in Week 2. It did feel like Grant watching St. Mary's game last week, the offense starting to come together. If they're going to beat the Shamrocks tonight, you feel like that offense has to keep moving in the right direction. Yeah, you got to keep moving forward, and especially with it, you know, opening league play today, you got to bring your best ball today, you know, because everyone's going to be playing a little bit harder than they did, you know, in the previous weeks. Because uh, these games, as you get forward, gain so much more importance. You're, you're trying to have the record to, to get in the playoffs, and you're trying to get into that Catholic League championship. So all that starts now. And for St. Mary's offensively, I think the key to success today for them is just getting their playmakers involved, trying to take the burden off of Axel Newell, let him take what's there, you know, let the defense kind of present itself, and then just you know, have a flow with the offense, right? You know, don't have these three and outs, don't turn the ball over. And if they can do that today, I think we're going to be in, in store for a good one. We'll see that offense for St. Mary's on the field in a little bit, but for now they got to kick it off. Sam Carrick, number 81. We'll send it away. The senior who holds a 4-0 GPA and also plays soccer and baseball in his free time. 35th all-time meeting between these old rivals from the Catholic League. Shamrocks lead the all-time series 20 to 14, and they've won four in a row against the Eaglets. Sun setting on this mid-September Friday night. Another battle between old foes in a pivotal early season game in the Catholic League. Ah, uh, we gotta wait a few more seconds. All that build up, all that anticipation, and the ball just isn't quite set on the tee. All right, take two. Carrick approaches the ball. Off we go from Catholic Central. It's a short kick fielded by the up man Johnson at the 15. And he pushes the pile forward up near the 30. And pretty good starting field position for Catholic Central on drive one. Quarterback for Catholic Central, number eight, Bo Jackson, a name you may remember from last high school football season in Michigan, returning starting quarterback as Catholic Central team lost to eventual state champion Belleville in the regional final. Grant, as you get ready for this ball game and evaluate Bo Jackson, what do you see? I see a kid that is making big strides, but is also uh, being helped with you know the addition of new coaches on the staff. Kyle Short, uh, one of the quarterback coaches for them, uh, just emphasized that his growth is, is from last year to this year has been tremendous. Uh, so he's in for a big one today. Somewhere Tom Mack smiles. First play of the game, they're running the tight tee, but they're not getting very much at all. Trying to get Jaden Pyton on the right side of the line, and he may be gained a couple of inches. And Jaden Pyton, that's a name you're going to hear a lot today, uh, not only on offense, but on defense. But on offense, he'll play quarterback in wildcat situations. Uh, he'll play receiver, play some slot, tight end, uh, running back as you see there. He's actually their leading rusher right now, uh, so he's a guy that's going to get his name called a lot today. Uh, he's got to be a difference maker for Catholic Central. To the pistol on second down. Krieger the back behind Jackson. They're giving it to him. He is rumbling on that left side of the line, lowered his shoulder, and gained a good chunk. 
Skyler Bonner wrapped them up, but this makes it a third down and shorter for Catholic Central. And that's where you want to live uh, if you're Catholic Central, especially on this first drive. you got to keep the chains moving, stay ahead of them. You're in a third down and four here. You know, you want to keep it in your realm, right? And they come out, and they're in 21, 22 personnel, and they're just running it, right? They're saying, hey, we're going to run it on this first drive. Sprint it out a little bit here, going to step in the gun. Uh, but good run there, good finish uh, by Lee Krieger. Third down three, Jackson dropping back. He has given a ton of time, and he throws high. He missed Samson Gash. You know, early game jitters there. Had a receiver. Uh, they ran a little slant flat. We call that a dragon concept. Uh, he had the flat route right away. The, the safety, they kind of bumped it uh, into man coverage. So a bump is when if you're on the side where he motions from, you just tell the other guy, other safety on the side, hey, you run with him, you take him. I'll take your responsibility here on the backside. Bo misses that first read. You want to get it to the flat, let him run, turn up field. And if it's not there, he had Samson Gash, 18, uh, sitting right in the hole uh, and just missed him over his head. Uh, I'd expect Bo to, to clean that up and, and get going here on his second drive. Away for Catholic Central. It is fair caught by Bryson Williams. You're going to hear his name a lot tonight. Inside the 30, St. Mary's gets a defensive stop, and here comes the offense, drive number one. Similar looking quarterback on the other side for St. Mary's. It's Axel Newell, big bodied junior. Grant, when you evaluate him coming into the game and you evaluate St. Mary's, what do you see? Yeah, and it's just some of the keys for these guys and Axel's success, right? Avoid turnovers, uh, win the explosive play battle. Bryson Williams is a guy that's going to be making big plays on the outside and also just make CC one dimensional when they're on defense. Uh, make them, you know, throw it and get them a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, but, you know, Bryson Williams, like you said, is a name we're going to hear a lot today. His tape, uh, he's only a junior, standing 6'2", 200 pounds, uh, but plays like a senior. Uh, he'll be a future uh, Power 5 kid one day. He's a heck of a ball player. And they got some other, some other guys that they fly around and are explosive, so we'll, we'll, we'll hear them as well today, too. First play for St. Mary's was a run to Patterson, and he gained a couple of yards. Second down, seven. Power formation, they're running left. Gaining a couple of more yards up near the 35. And it'll be third down and four coming for St. Mary's. Trying the left side again with Patterson. Looks like both these teams, you know, took an took a, uh, extra meeting this week and said, you know what, we're going to come out and we're both going to run it at you, right? You know, St. Mary's is a primarily error rate spread. They want to get those playmakers in space on the perimeter. But they come out in the first two plays in 22 personnel, which is two tight ends and two running backs. And they're still in it, and they're saying, hey, we're going to play smash mouth football. But, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little play action. On the ground, right side, ball is out. Oh, what a hit. That's Catholic Central football. Krieger pounces on the ball after a monster hit stick forced it out. Krieger's on the right track to have the kind of day they need him to have, right? With Cameron Lloyd out on offense, you're going to see Lee Krieger here in the middle. He's a middle linebacker running down the field. You'll see him first one to the ball, and it's a form tackle. Puts his nose of the helmet right on the football, makes it come out. That's what CC emphasized this week. They said, hey, we got to encourage turnovers from St. Mary's. They've already done it. They've already shown us that they can turn it over. we got to influence them and get more out of them, and they did that there. Flipped the field position. Now they're marching. They're on the you know the 39, 38, or excuse me, 34 yard line, and, and, and they're in uh, enemy territory. Right back to work goes the Catholic Central offense. Couple of fakes for Jackson. Bo given the time down the middle. That pass is not caught. It is incomplete. They were trying to hit Gash over the middle, and the stud sophomore couldn't bring it in. Love the play design there. They, they bring the orbit motion guy behind, you know, motion guy behind the running back. They do a play action pass with so the linebackers step up, secondary players, you know, they're playing flat footed out there, man coverage. They, they come up and react. Uh, and they had Samson Gash, got away with a little bit of a hold. St. Mary's safety there, you know, tugged the jersey a little bit, but the refs let them play early. It's a rivalry game, right? They're going to let them play a little bit. Uh, and Bo put a little bit too much air, a little bit more, you know, right on the line there. He had Samson for six. Second down, Jackson keep it. The long-legged Bo Jackson brought down by a couple of eaglets as he tumbles across the 30-yard line. And this brings up a third down for CC. 
And I think that's CC when they can get Bo to run, and Bo is he wants to throw the ball first. He's a pocket passer, and I respect that. You know, with the O line that they have, I'd stay in that pocket for days, just like he does as well, and just find my open targets. But talking to Coach Asante this week, he said that when we can make Bo a runner, that teams aren't ready for that, and that's going to give them an edge. So look for them to get Bo involved in the run today, kind of mix up their scheme. On the ground here. Krieger the carry, he does not have the first down. He's tackled right around the 25. They gotta get to the 23. I'd say decision time, Grant, but uh, I think they've made their decision. They do have Jackson off the field, but there is no kicker on the field. Yeah, Jackson's off the field. They're gonna probably go Wildcat here. They got a heavy package where they put 73 Danilo Gubernich at, at tight end, and they bring in uh, another Cashmere Moore, 28, another fullback type body, and they just play hard, man. Wildcat, you're going to see Jaden Pyden uh, ball out today from that, that pack package. There he goes, like clockwork, Jaden Pyden up the gut, and the Catholic Central Drive continues. And he's just, I mean, just really one of their best athletes for Catholic Central, Jaden Pyden. Uh, terrific baseball player as well, coach mentioned during the week. But he's a kid that can play anything. Plays that center field at safety on defense. Comes up and hits you and just runs hard. Runs like a typical CC uh, shamrock and just punishes you. Here he's trying to get to the outside. And then he is forced out of bounds by one of the defensive backs. Stepping up to make the tackle for St. Mary's in that defensive backfield. Darren Jones, number 23. And second down coming. And if you're CC here, right, you want to keep these chains moving. It's about a second and, and seven here, second and you know six. You want to stay ahead, make it a third down and reasonable, right, to allow your offensive coordinator to say, hey, we still got some plays that we can run. You're in scoring territory. You want to take a commanding lead, a command to this game, you got to put it in here. Give again. Room up the middle and rumbling inside the five-yard line. Catholic Central in business. Cam Lloyd, the regular starter, is out, so they got to start cycling through the bodies. Cedric Williams had a touchdown last week and nearly had one here. And hit the hole. And what do you? St. Mary's has really good defensive ends, just like Catholic Central. Uh, you know, Jack Bardis and and one of the Janda brothers there, Jack Janda, a young sophomore for them, but really good players. Uh, and what do you do when you have a good defensive end? You challenge them, right? And they run a little read option there and make him have to decide. Bo Jackson does the right thing, lets a uh, you know, running back keep the ball and puts him in a, a first and goal here. Jackson under center, given to Krieger, who does not get into the end zone. Gained a couple, second down goal. All right, back under center goes Bo Jackson in the familiar tight T. The turn and the give, leaning near the goal line. Did he get there? He did not. Krieger is not in. Third down goal. Third down a goal. You got Kale Rogowski in the backfield, right? He's usually your tight end, but he's a big body, physical specimen that they like to get on the edge and block or up in the middle on a linebacker. I'd expect them to just go right down the middle again and try to get those guys in the end zone. This is Bo Jackson. He did get into the end zone, but the officials halting play. It's an illegal shift on Catholic Central. Turns a third down and goal from the one into a third down and goal from no longer the one. Yeah, and those are the penalties that are going to come back and hurt you. You know, you're on the one yard line. You got literally 12, you know, 12 inches to get that ball across. You got to capitalize there. You can't shoot yourself in the foot. But nonetheless, there, if, if any of you know, your fans out there watched the you know, Thursday night football game, you saw Jalen Hurts get pushed in the end zone twice. Uh, and that's something that CC is going to do today with Bo Jackson as well. You know, they almost had it there, but look for them to try to get in here on, on a third and short goal. Bo dropping back. He is brought down from behind. The ball came out. Catholic Central does fall on it. But oh my goodness, what pressure coming from the backside. That was Chase Arnold, number 41. Wow. And I have to see the replay there, but it looks like they sent a guy off the edge. You know, the O line probably shifted to the field right. When you have those, you know, the, a normal pass set, you usually set your protection to the field. They you know, have an unaccounted man there uh, coming off the edge, and, and Bo Jackson got lit up. Glad he got up after that one. Um, but for St. Mary's, that's fantastic. You're forcing a field goal after a turnover. Uh, you know, that's really what 
out of that situation, that's the best thing that could have happened to them. Here's Jake Madigan on to try to field goal for Catholic Central. Returning kicker from last year, he did make a 40-yarder during last season. This one about 32 yards. Snap is good, the hold is good, and the kick also good. So Catholic Central had a third down and goal from the one. Costly penalty, they have to settle for three. And that's what, when you get into the Catholic League, when you start playing these league games, that's what's going to set you apart. That's what's going to give you the ability to, to be playing at Ford Field for the Catholic League Championship is those type of plays, the discipline it takes to not, you know, not shoot yourself in the foot when you're 12 inches away from crossing the goal line. Nonetheless, they come with come away with three there, giving the ball back to St. Mary's here. St. Mary's is going to have to look for you know a good drive here and not, and not avoid a you know, avoid a turnover. Excuse me, but nonetheless, CC gets on the board first. Uh, good job by them. Hungry Howie's a great partner of the State Champs Network's Mr. Football and Anvil Awards. Congratulations to Hungry Howie's on 50 years of the best flavored crust pizza. Go order your pizza at hungryhowie's.com. I say this every week. Every time I read that, I get hungry. Grant, do we get a discount at some point for Hungry Howie's? I'd love some flavored crust. You know, I'm waiting for the, the, the text you sent me. Hey, Hungry Howie's reached out. We're good. <laughs> uh, I mean, just keep praying, man. Just keep putting it out there. Maybe someone will hear your prayers, you know. As we always like to say, why do this job if you can't get free things? In case you're wondering what the delay was, Madigan, the kicker for Catholic Central, we talked about this last week, there are different balls that you use for kicking versus every other facet of the game. They call it the K-ball. Jake couldn't find the K-ball. Yeah, you got to find the ball you like. You know, the pitcher likes to get the dirt on the ball. You know, likes to rough it up how he likes it. Quarterbacks like, you know, the ball a certain way. Uh, you know, so do kickers. Now, if you're Catholic Central here, you got to you, you got to tell Jake the kicker here. Hey, you got to be careful, right? I'd kick it away from number five, Bryson Williams. He's a proven returner uh, in the De La Salle game. Had a 95-yard kickoff return touchdown. A really explosive player for them. If I'm CC, I'm kicking it anywhere besides him. Short wobbly kick. They do kick it away from the deep man. This return coming across the 20 near the 30. It is Patterson once again. And St. Barry's with not half bad starting field position at the 31. For what it's worth, Grant, St. Mary's didn't try to throw the football on that first drive. All runs and eventually a turnover on their line is the left tackle, Big Antonio Johnson, the 6'5 junior, transfer from Detroit King. Newell trying to throw. He's got the time and zipping a sidearm across the middle for a first down. St. Mary's moves the sticks for the first time today. Good look and throw and catch to Jaden Savory, the converted basketball player. Good job there, just running a little slant flat combination, right? You want to, you're playing cover three, you got a hook defender that's going to, you know, vacate the area. Uh, and if you're St. Mary's, you got to find the intermediate passes to open up the deep ones. Uh, uh, Axel Newell does a fantastic job finding his receiver in stride there and, and a good uh, conversion. Wants to throw again. He's got it caught again. Williams slipping a tackle. That's what he'll do. Grant, you were watching tape all week and sending texts. I can't wait to watch Bryson Williams this week. Explosive player. Uh, you know, it just and, and also a big one. He broke through that tackle. I mean, he's standing 6'2", 200 pounds. And he was only a junior. Uh, you know, he's got an offer from Central Michigan. Uh, you know, I, I, I reached out to Alan True, and I, I said, hey, you know, I think this kid's going to be a power five kid. Just watching what he can do as a junior, um, really explosive kid. He's got a bright future. Run, not very much. Rollins pushed backward. A surge on the defensive line for Catholic Central. That moves the Eaglets backwards, and now they got third down. And I think the one to wrap them up there was Cal Ewing. Um, and, and just the great linebackers this year, they're a little bit green, uh, Coach Asante said, right? They're a little young, a little, you know, imma not immature, but just unexperienced, right? So they got to have a big game and stop the run and help, you know, force uh, St. Mary's to become a little bit one-dimensional here. So look for a big day out of the, of the three linebackers uh, for Catholic Central. Newell throwing again, and incomplete. Miscommunication on the route. Savory kept running, and Newell wanted him to stop. Yeah, and that, that could be, uh, 
you know, an audible, right? If you get off coverage, sometimes you guys have receivers and quarterbacks and offenses have a check where, hey, if he's off coverage, you're going to take a gift, right? A gift is just a free access throw, five yards, seven yards, even sometimes a 10 yard hitch, a curl route. Um, that time, it looks like the receiver, Jaden uh, Savory, you know, converted it, which converted means he turned it into a go route. Uh, and then, you know, Axel Newell just wasn't on the same page. Uh, I'd like to see them clean that up there because it's open. And CC plays this cover three off coverage. The opportunities are there. They just got to, uh, you know, convert. Wobbly punt for St. Mary's takes a decent roll inside the 25. And Catholic Central will start backed up right around there, 20. Alta Equipment knows when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alta gains a nice handful on first down. And just stats show us exactly what he's doing now. I mean, on the year, he's averaging about seven yards a pop, uh, really doing a good job behind that CC offensive line uh, led by Benny Azuka, the only guy in CC history to start as a freshman. That's impressive, man. So look for those hogs up front to really be a difference today uh, in that run game. Jackson alone, throwing incomplete, miscommunication with Gash. I'm glad you brought up Benny Azuka starting as a freshman. You and I were covering some Catholic Central football games last year when 75 in blue and white was starting as a freshman. And I made half joke, half truth. There used to be a rule that you could not play on the varsity team as a freshman at Catholic Central. You could have been Joe Montana. You're not going to play on the team. Well, they've bent the rules because I guess Benny's that good. Yeah, sometimes, I mean, if, you know, why keep the, your, your good players off when, when they're you know deserving of getting on the field? And, and Benny's proven that, and it's proven to be a good decision and letting him be that one asterisk uh, in CC's history on the offensive line. Flag coming out here. Looked like Jaden Pyden started early. Third down longer. Every high school sporting event in the state of Michigan has one thing in common, the officials. And the officials are needed now more than ever. Go to MHSA.com for some more info because without officials, it's only practice. Shamrock's going backwards, third down long. Jackson given time, floating a gorgeous ball. That pass is incomplete. Coates had the coverage and knocked it away from Gash. They keep trying to feed Sampson, but they can't find him. Yeah, they got to find ways to get him open. And, and right there, that's the right thing to do. You know, St. Mary's brought the pressure. They brought you know five guys, the middle linebacker, you know, splitting up the middle, uh, and they went man coverage across the board. You could tell, you know, the DBs were pressed in their face. And in that opportunity, opportunity in that situation, you got to count on your receiver to win. Sampson couldn't get enough separation there. Really good defense by Coates, number 22. Uh, that's a defensive player that you know, Coach Gonzalez had high things to say of. Um, but right there, you got to find a way to, to get open and, and be, have a man beater. This is a St. Mary's excellent return. The line drive punt fielded and returned across the 30-yard line. A little bit of room, and Duke Coates made it work. Excellent starting field position for the Eaglets. All right, so first down for St. Mary's inside Catholic Tensile territory at the 29-yard line. Newell goes back under center. Newell given, Patterson left side, escorted out of bounds after a solid game. Grant, we have to be good journalists. Uh, a friend of the program wrote in, we were wrong. Benny Azuka was not the only freshman ever to start at Catholic Central. Do I have this right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there's a few other there. Austin Brown, uh, Declan Bile. Uh, you know, so apologies on that one. On that note, uh, you know, Benny Azuka is one of a few to start as a freshman. So uh, still props to him and those freshmen. St. Mary's running on the right side, tripped up as they approach first down yardage at the 20. They'll be a yard shy. That's Trey Goyke on the run. Thank you to our loyal viewers, making sure that all our T's are crossed and I's are dotted. I can't imagine who would be writing into the program to make sure that we know that Declan Bile was on the team as a freshman. Now, who would that be? Someone's got a bird's eye view and just they can see what, you know, what we miss. So good catch there and always good to get the facts straight. 
Running again on third down. Didn't need much, didn't gain much, but St. Mary's will have the first down. You know, they vacillated these first two drives, Grant, between power game, out of the shotgun. It's a lot of power running so far on this drive. Yeah, and part of me is starting to think maybe it's a little bit of a let's, let's cut out the liability, right? When we spread it out, uh, we, we tend to turn it over. Uh, Axel Newell is, you know, had five touchdowns on this season with three interceptions. So, so there is some you know, room for error when you when you let him throw, you know, 40 times a game, you know, 30 times a game. But nonetheless, right now they're playing, you know, power football here. They're running off tackles, uh, and they're making it really hard on Catholic Central's D line to, to get a stop. Power give up the middle, not very much, maybe a yard or two. When you got big Danilo Guberinich sucking up space in the middle, trying the middle is often not a good idea. Yeah, and a couple standouts for the CCD line, Stone Chaney, number 17, and 88, Kale Rogowski. Uh, and I asked you know, Coach Sasante, I said, you know, tell me about those guys. You know, what makes them so great? And he had nothing but great things to say, but he said, hey, don't forget Danilo Guberinich. He is a force to be reckoned with, demands double teams in the middle, and just causes havoc for any center guard combination trying to block him. St. Mary's doesn't have to snap it again in the first quarter, and they won't. So we're off to the second. Shocker, one quarter into a Catholic League game, and it's close. St. Mary's on the move, trying to take the lead when we come on back. At Hungry Howie's, we're famous for flavor, and this is our chief flavor officer. Every hour of every day, our CFO obsesses over the tastiest ingredients, combining them to create new flavor combinations your taste buds never knew they needed until now. Introducing his latest master pizza, the Bee Sting. Hot honey drizzle, classic cup pepperoni, and spicy jalapenos, or any two toppings. And our famous flavored crust. It's all the buzz. Hungry? Howie's! I said I'd never join. Then I wouldn't get to work on one of these. Never knew how strong I was. I figured I'd never get out of my hometown. Or be the one who stops an attack. Joining the Navy sounds crazy. Saying never actually is. At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Bogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Women is dedicated to providing the female athlete equal coverage as well as bring awareness in the gaps in the recruiting process. That is another run for another different eaglet. They're cycling through them here. That's Leo Wilson on the carry. It is going to be third down, though, on a drive for St. Mary's Grant where they haven't thrown the football yet. Yeah, this drive has been power football. They've been in enemy territory, right, so they haven't had to march down the field. Uh, right there, you saw two receivers along with the, you know, the three backs in the backfield. Uh, so they're trying to, you know, even the numbers in the box, trying to split everyone out and not make this, a, you know, a phone booth fight. Uh, I'd expect them to go to Axel here and try to find one of his favorite targets. Uh, at some point, they got to put their trust back in him and let him uh, try to make a play. That's another run for not very much. Once again, they try Leo Wilson, a third down run that barely gained anything. They're just, you know, they're sticking with what they're doing this drive and in the last drive, right? They got a formula, they got a plan. Um, you know, they came into the week, you know, seeing things that we didn't, right? They're their coaches, they're on the field for a reason, um, you know, and they're running their game plan. You know, they, they're showing 30 personnel, you know, three running backs, no tight ends, two receivers. So they're mixing it up a little bit from what, you know, what they usually do. Um, but you got a fourth and, you know, fourth and six here. Uh, you know, I expect them to, tr you know, they got to try to get six yards. So, you know, whether that's a run or some type of, you know, on the move throw, try to get Axel in space, let him run if it's not there, wouldn't surprise me either. Here he's dropping back and floating a fade. Corner of the end zone. No. 
The catch was made, but it was out of bounds. An awesome effort by Zane Wilson, but he couldn't get those feet in bounds. Zane Wilson comes down with a really good catch here, uh, but just a, a tad bit outside. Axel Newell taps the center and says, hey, let's go. Drops back, throws a fade ball. Good location. You want to put that thing in the back corner of the end zone. There's an imaginary box you tell the receivers and the quarterbacks, hey, put it back there away from the cornerback, just a bit outside the, you know, the end zone. Uh, but nonetheless, Newell throws a good, uh, good end zone goal ball uh, right in the back pylon. That one just a little bit less gas, and I think that's a, you know, a six-point conversion there. So Catholic Central back on the field, and credit to our officiating crew as well. That is not an easy call to make. We saw in the replay, Wilson was out of bounds. They start with Pyden in the single wing. Jaden running up the middle, and once again, getting a solid chunk on a good old school running play for Catholic Central. Are you considering the U.S. Navy as enlisted or as an officer? Learn about the American Navy and your career opportunities within the U.S. Armed Forces. Contact the local U.S. Navy recruiting office at 734-679-1998. Couple of minutes into the second quarter, St. Mary's drive stalls deep in CC territory. Catholic Central had a drive third and goal from the one, but had to settle for three. Biden again, looking for room, not very much. Third down on the way. And when you run Wildcat, you really got to rely on your O-line to get a good push up front, right? Because when you're in Wildcat, if you're, if you're the quarterback and you're just a skilled player, the tendency is that you're probably not going to throw it, right? You're going to be a runner or, or hand it off to another receiver or running back in motion. Uh, so right there, St. Mary's does a fantastic job. Those linebackers, you could see them. They were creeping on their toes, ready to go, uh, playing downhill with urgency, uh, and they just stuffed it there. Uh, and CC's so going to have to adapt in that Wildcat if they want to try to see some yards in, uh, in, that, in that formation. Pressure coming. Bo Jackson steps into an incompletion. He was hit as he threw. Fourth down again on good pressure again. Yeah, good pressure. They bring uh, a couple backers here, and they just add the pressure. And Bo Jackson just, you know, the, the clock's got to come off, right? you got to get off of it, right? If you don't throw it, throw it out of bounds, get rid of it. You know the pressure's coming. They're bringing six. You got five or six blocking, so you might have you know, the, enough numbers to cover right there. They just held it a little bit too long. I'd like to see Bo step up in the pocket. If it's not there on your first hitch, take it off and run or throw a, a, just a, a fade ball out of bounds. It, it just, you know, live to see another day. I don't want to see your quarterback taking hits. And that comes with the, you know, maturity and growth, and that's something that he's learning and will continue to learn, and, and something that the offensive coordinator, Kyle Short, you know, is gonna, or you know, quarterback coach offensive coordinator, is going to you know, get with him and, and tell him. Ewing, another punt. This one is blocked. It is blocked, rolling to the end zone, and recovered for a St. Mary's touchdown. Big Vincent Lazar falls on the football. I think that was Aiden Donovan who had the block. Number seven, Aiden Donovan with the block. The guy who is a member of the otherworldly St. Mary's baseball program the future Spartan on the diamond just made a huge play on the gridiron. Huge play, and it came at the perfect time. Uh, you know, St. Mary's needed a little bit of a, a juice pump right there, and they got it. Aiden Donovan is a player, uh, Coach Gonzalez said, is one of their best-kept secrets. He's a guy that, you know, is a baseball commit, but, you know, runs fast. He's a 4-5 or five guy, and he showed it there. Got off the edge, put a hand up, blocked it, got out of the kicker's way. Uh, and, and Coach Gonzalez said during the week, we got we to play all three phases, and I want two scores on defense. They got one there on special teams. Fantastic job. And you put a little tick marker on, you know, on, your, on your goal chart when you go back uh, you know, at work the next day. You say, hey, do special teams play well? Check. That's a really good play in a big game uh, when they needed it. Good job by Aiden Donovan and the rest of that St. Mary's special teams there. We just saw the St. Mary's bench giving Vincent Lazar a bunch of high fives and hugs. Let's be honest, Grant. Do you think when Vincent woke up this morning he thought he was going to score a touchdown? 
You never know, right? You know, you could have had a wild dream. He could have envisioned it, right? You never know. The, the mind's a powerful thing, but nonetheless, they're getting other people involved here. And, and for once here, St. Mary's, you know, did turn it over early, but they're capitalizing off of turnovers. Uh, so good job by St. Mary's there. Uh, and that gave them a little bit of a boost. Let's see if they, you know, play good defense here, get another stop and find some momentum. And let's see if CC can counteract that with some hard-nosed football. Justin Sassante, Catholic Central's head coach, learned at the feet of Tom Mack, one of the finest high school football coaches this state has ever seen. And Tom Mack loved to tell his players, sudden change, be ready. I think Justin's telling the boys on the sidelines the exact same thing after that block punt touchdown. Mm -hmm. You got to be ready, and you got to you got to play within yourself, right? Don't you know? Don't get too high. Don't get too low. Still early in the second quarter. A lot of ball left. You just play your game, right? You got to wipe that one away and just come back here and have a good offensive drive. Carrick kicks. Catholic Central returning from the ten. This is Samson Gash tripped up across the twenty-five, and Catholic Central starts shy of their thirty. The Lawrence Tech Blue Devil football team back in the field tomorrow. They're playing St. Francis from Illinois. Catch the game live on TV 20 Detroit at noon. For more info, go to ltuathletics.com. So as this Catholic Central offense, Grant, comes back on the field, stuck on those three points, what do you think they're thinking about as they come back in the field? Uh, well, they're, you got to understand that they're getting man coverage on these third down situations, right? So you got to come up with something to get these guys open that doesn't have to take a long time. So I'd expect to see some crossing routes on third downs, but in the first and second down, I'd expect them to keep that, that hard nose running coming. Trying a hard nose run with Krieger, but he just lost a couple of yards. The St. Mary's defensive line starting to win battles up front. Yeah, and... and Came in today talking a lot about Catholic Central's D-line, but St. Mary's has got a really good one, too. They got Jack Bartis as one of their captains. He's a defensive end. Uh, you know, Albion Offer, um, you know, and another guy, Jack Janda, uh, number 88, sophomore, big guy, 6'5", 220. So they got some fierce guys on that D-line for, for St. Mary's. Oh, by the way, playing against a Catholic Central offensive line that only lost one starter from last year's team. Jackson on second out and long, throws a tip pass that's nearly picked. Sitting down in coverage, nearly an interception, and it's third down. Mm. And just a little bit of a predetermination right there by Bo. Uh, they're running a little bit of a spacing concept, so each, oh, each guy uh, you know, just gets to their landmark and, and throttles down and waits for the ball. Not the best concept when you're going against man coverage, right? You want to keep your guys on the move. You want to have routes that, you know, can get your defender off you and let you catch the ball in space and move. In that situation there, good play call, just not the right defense, uh, a defensive look for them. Play action on third down. A long roll for Jackson. He nearly threw another pick. Back-to-back -back plays where St. Mary's linebackers have knocked it away. First time, Darren Jones. Second time, Chris Coates. It's getting a little scary here on Bo's throws, right? He's got to find a way to, to stay composed. Uh, he's playing a little bit like you know, it's desperation time. You no know, need to force throws if they're not open. And he'll learn as time goes on. You know, If the throw's not there, you just throw it in the dirt, live to see another down, let your special teams improve your field position defensively. In that situation, uh, Bo Jackson's just got to you know, maybe even run there, right? Get the edge and use your legs, uh, but you got to avoid throwing to the other color jersey. Uh, two close calls there. Uh, Catholic Central can't afford to have that you know, turnover in their own uh, territory there. So. So a timeout on the field. This will be a fourth down for Catholic Central just over four minutes into the second quarter. Grant, as we get shots of both huddles, St. Mary's and Catholic Central, what do you think is being said in both of those huddles? Uh, you're hearing a lot of the same things from, from both teams. Uh, I bet the message is similar. It's, it's hey, 
no turnovers, keep playing hard defense, and, and let's put this end, uh, you know, for St. Mary's, let's let's get another score here on this offensive drive, right? Let's make this a two-score game. If you're, if you're Catholic Central, right, you got to try to find some rhythm offensively. You know, the run game's there for, you know, one or two plays, you know, you get four or five yards, but you got to find a way to get past that third and five, right, where you're, you're having to punt after every every third down. Uh, so this, you know, probably similar message, right, keep the gas going, step on the gas, don't step off the break and just play within yourselves, right? Don't get too crazy and don't make any ill-advised uh, mistakes. Ewing to punt. This one clean. Driving the Eagle, it's back inside their 40. And not much on the return, barely across the 40. Shout out to Lou and BJ. State champs boys up north watching the ball game and thank you to all of you watching the game, wherever you may be. It's our pleasure to travel across the state of Michigan. Already, Grant, the fourth game that we've covered so far this season. As I say that, you shake your head. You're like me. Stop going so fast. Stop going so fast. I felt like I was waiting for football season for the last eight months, and it's already almost halfway through. Man, slow it down. Football should be here forever. I uh, love when it's here, though. Good times. Stretch run to the right side for St. Mary's. That is Duke. Coates on the run, gaining a handful on first down. He's an explosive player for them. I showed some really good plays uh, in the De La Salle game, had an explosive 30-yard touchdown catch. Also showed that he will receive handoffs in the backfield. He's a guy that they want to just find a way to put the ball in his hands because he makes good things happen. St. Mary's has spread it around today. Five different men have carried the football. Newell to throw. Caught, first down St. Mary's. That's Zane Wilson moving the sticks. And they get back to that same thing. The last drive St. Mary's had, they had that error, right, where the receiver converted it to a go route. Newell threw the ball for a, you know, a, a, a hitch route or a curl, and the receiver wasn't there. They weren't on the same page. They go back to the huddle. They fix it. You see the completion. You see the conversion. So a little bit of coaching, a little bit of chemistry does there. Really good throw, really good catch. Back to the ground, and this play is suffocated. Danilo Gubarinic will wreck your running game. And he's not a guy that you want to have one guy blocking, right? you got to try to double-team him up to the linebackers. If you let him run free on, on your guard or your tackle, chances are that big fella is going to get through and cause him havoc. Really good job by CC right there. You know, first down, you know, give up a first down, but they push him right back to make it a second and 15. Quick throw caught by Williams. Lowering his shoulder and getting what he can. Grant, are you surprised that we're nearly halfway into the second quarter and Bryson Williams has only touched the ball a couple of times? Yeah, I just I think it's a little bit of, you know, hey, let's not force downfield throws, right? Let's let it come to us. You know, I feel like they're going to set it up, right? You know, he's one of their best players, if not their best athlete on the field. They're going to work ways to get him the ball. Uh, you know, they're, they're just kind of letting him ease into the game, letting CC kind of fall asleep on him. They'll come back to him. Newell throwing downfield, and he missed. Williams. And another thing, Evan, to that point is St. Mary's, a lot of his plays are really made on goal balls, post routes, you know, deep developing three to four seconds in the pocket type plays. Uh, and Catholic Central doesn't give you that much time. I mean, with Stone Chaney, number 17 on the edge, with number 88, Kel Roganowski, and a number 73 plug in the middle, uh, Danilo Gubernich, you know, they're a really good defensive line that doesn't allow you to have those deep developing concepts, right? So they got to kind of work ways in to get him the ball. I think that's another reason why we haven't seen five get too many touches yet. It's just he's a really good deep threat, really good underneath. They just got to find ways to work to get him the ball. Bartis to punt. That's Gash back deep. And now this turns into a longer punt for St. Mary's. I'll say it because I'm sure a lot of you at home are thinking it. 6-13 to go in the first half. A 7-3 game where the only touchdown has come on a block punt. This is the type of football game only a Catholic League football fan can love. Mm -hmm. I bet Coach Justin Sasante is having a little flashback, right? You know, it's just a ground, hard, run the, you know, run the ball type of game. 
Uh, this is the kind of ball that he was playing back when he was here in the 90s. So uh, look for them to try to keep that going, but also try to find ways to get Samson Gash involved. Uh, you know, and the other receivers they have. You know, look for Jaden Pyden's name to, to get called here on this drive because he's one of the really good athletes. Uh, and, and just find different ways to get guys involved without being. Look, Central, someone's got to step up. Maybe it's Cedric Williams. Yeah, and Cedric Williams has had really good runs so far. He's shown really good speed, really bursting through the holes. Some you know, younger players tend to, to get hesitant, get slow feet when you're trying to run through those tackles. Uh, but Cedric's hitting the hole 100 miles per hour. Uh, and, and talking to Coach Sasante this week, you know, he mentioned you know, guys like John Almeida are going to step up at running back and DeAndre Green. Uh, and we haven't seen them touch the ball yet back there. Uh, and But maybe Cedric Williams just had a fantastic week of practice and earned it. You know, he's uh, looking sharp, looking good. And, uh, you know, he's moving the ball for him. Here he is again, spinning off the initial tackle attempt and making it third down and a little bit shorter. And just running inside zone there, you know, it's just a you know man scheme, right? It's man on man up front. You've got to push your guy off the ball if you're CC, and if you're St. Mary's, you got to penetrate the gaps. A uh, really good job there by uh, St. Mary's of getting inside, working inside, winning inside, uh, and you know making it a, a short gain, uh, you know, and making this a third down. <laughs> got to get to the 36. Jackson dropping back, setting up a screen to big Kale Rogowski. He is tackled in the open field, but not before moving the sticks. You give the six foot three, 230 pound senior some room to move. It's like a Mack truck. Really good job there. And they're gonna go tempo here, right? This is something they do when they sense the team is getting a little tired or they can you know, steal, a, steal a few yards on a quick play. St. Mary's is all over that one. Uh, but just touching on that last play there, they, they do a fantastic job. They go, uh, they, they create a nub side. Nub side is just a tight end alone on one side, and they have all three receivers to the field. They send the running back in motion to make it a four by, a four by one, essentially. You know, you got the defense thinking everything's going to go to the field. Cornerbacks man to man here down on, uh, you know, Kale Rogowski. They do a fantastic job of getting him the ball, uh, you know, letting the you know, cornerback kind of fall asleep, right? You know, uh, Kale Rogowski goes to block on that screen and then slips out. Really good play goal. Uh, and it was a great play call because it got him, you know, a first down, right? Move the sticks. You want to have forward momentum if you're CC, right? Give up a punt, you know, a block punt. You got to have good drive to help your defense and help yourself. They threw a flag on first down, so now it's first down five. Jackson throws downfield. This is caught, and this is a Catholic Central touchdown. The Swiss Army Knife, Jaden Pyden again. And just you got to be careful if you're St. Mary's, right? You know, you've been stopping the run, stopping the run. What do they do here? They go to the old high school football play, right? Bubble and go. So the guy, Jaden Pyden, goes out and tries to block the, the cornerback, but then slips right upfield. The safety falls asleep in his deep half coverage, right? They're in cover two. He's got half the field deep. He thinks the receiver, Jaden Pyden, is going to go block, slips past him. Good catch, great throw. And that's what CC needed, right? A little bit of momentum. And who do they go to? One of their best playmakers, underclassman, Jaden Pyden. Extra point got blocked, so it remains a 9-7 game. When you watch Catholic Central play, you can't help but shake your head when you watch Jaden Pyden, because already in this game, he's lined up at quarterback, he's run out of the running back spot, and he just caught a 60-plus yard touchdown. What can he do? Uh, and, uh, not much. I mean, he plays defensive back. He's at safety coming down and tackling hard. You know, Coach said he's one of their best tacklers. You know, with all three of their, their starting linebackers having graduated and moving on. You know, they lost a really good one last year in Braden Courser, uh, who went on to play at Saginaw Valley State. Uh, but, you know, someone's got to step up, right? And if you can play any position, you're a versatile player. You're a key piece to this team. Really good job there. And that's going to build, you know, a little bit of momentum, a little bit of confidence for Bo, right? That could have been a throw where he missed him by a yard, and that would have been really, really, you know, detrimental to his confidence. But nonetheless, they find a way to get Jaden, one of their best players, in space open, and they let Bo make a nice throw. Uh, I credit that to the coaching staff, the players that executed it, but also the scheme. Really good job by them. Hey, you talked to this Catholic Central coaching staff, specifically Justin Sasante, the head coach. He's really proud of the work his offensive coordinator, Kyle Short, is doing with Bo Jackson, the continued improvement week after week. 
and the way they're scheming their way into success, kind of like what you're talking about. Yeah, and you got to find ways, right? If you have a, you know, you got a junior quarterback that played a lot last year, uh, you know, split reps with uh, with another player last year, but in this year, but he's taking the keys, right? He's driving the car, so you got to find ways to, to keep him in the game. You know, the, the two drives ago, he has two passes that were almost picked, right? So you got to find ways to keep him involved, keep him, you know, energetic, and then a fantastic job there by you know the play caller, uh, and then just executing it, right? That's just really good job by uh, Catholic Central getting back on the board. We have a flag on the kickoff. Check that off your bingo board. Yeah. By the way, did you just say take the keys and drive the car? Were you uh, trying to quote the Beatles? You know, maybe you can drive my car? Uh, by, by accident, maybe just subconsciously. Uh, you know, maybe I heard a little tune from the Beatles on the way here, but, uh, you know, there's you – know, yeah, I can't say I did on that one. I you know, I don't know if our target demographic watching this broadcast has any idea who the Beatles are, and that's just terrible. If I can't run into someone and talk about, you know, Paul and John and, and Ringo and George, what's the point, you know? You're an old soul, Evan. Old soul. Thanks, Grant. I needed to hear that today. Take two on the kick for Catholic Central, and St. Mary's makes a fair catch. Patterson makes that catch, and they're going to have a really good starting field position right around the 35. The Construction Association of Michigan provides a vast resource array of services, information, and training to our diverse membership within Michigan's construction industry. Go to buildwithcam.com for a little bit more information. Axel Newell, number eight, the quarterback for St. Mary's, brings the troops back on the field. As of late, a lot of power running for the Eaglets. And it's another run up the middle, or not very much again. You know, they keep trying 73, Guberinich in the middle, and he keeps making plays. Yeah, just making plays. And in, in, in that situation, you got a five-man box, right? The, the outside linebackers are split outside the tackles. You got numbers. You got five blocking five. On that play, you want to pick up three to four, five if you can. But Danilo Gubernic is just going to be a plug in the middle. He's going to be a hard one to block. Newell pulls down the high snap. He gets it out to Duke Coates, who made a couple of men miss and turns it into a third down and much shorter for St. Mary's. Yeah, and, and he could have been tackled for no gain there, but, you know, Duke Coates, explosive playmaker, I mean, just can make a guy miss in a phone booth. Uh, really good job by him, uh, you know, getting those extra yards when it looked like he could have got tackled for none. Uh, you know, make this a third down and three. Uh, it takes a team effort to get this offense moving, so uh, he did his part on that one. Let's see if the rest of the team can to get this first down and convert here. And up on two and a half minutes to go in the first half. Run, Eaglets driving ahead up the middle. They should have the first down. Another different Eaglet running with a the football. They've had five different guys touch it today. That's Darren Jones with a first down carry. Darren Jones, he's a guy that didn't play the last two weeks. I uh, didn't get into why with the coach, but he was a guy you know, that was, you know, coach was excited to have him back this week, and uh, he's running hard for them. Once again, room for St. Mary's. One of their best runs of the night. This drive is in business now. Jones back in the lineup and making it happen. Really good job there. Really good cut, right? It looks like it was going to be an outside zone here. So he's just going to run to the to the outside the tackle, outside the tight end. But you know what? He steps his, you know, puts his foot in the ground and cuts north and south. And Catholic Central overplays it a little bit, right? You know, they're playing for the outside zone, trying to set the edge. And then Darren Jones just cuts inside and gets a, 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 plan, a good chunk there. Really good run, really good run by uh, Darren. Another run to the left side. This is Bryson Williams up to the 35. Been eyeing that timeout situation. Coming up on 90 seconds to go in the half. St. Mary's has two of the timeouts left. Two timeouts, a minute 30. You know, you're you know, on the 35-yard uh, line. You got a quarterback that can launch it. You got receivers that can go get it. Um, you're comfortable, right? You got time, and you don't want to give CC the ball back or make a you know, mistake here. So look for uh, Axel to make something happen. Incomplete. Short arm the throw, hoping for Janda, and that makes it third down. Coming up at the half, we give you an update in our top tens for the Mr. Football and Anvil Awards. 
delivered by Hungry Howie's. And Alan True from 24-7 Sports is coming along with all the latest recruiting news. What the score will be at halftime is still in doubt. St. Mary's facing third down long. Look for St. Mary's. I, if, if I'm St. Mary's, I know CC runs a cover, you know, three. Oh, this is a high snap. Newell couldn't grab it. That ball is free on the Shamrock. Catholic Central has created another turnover. Rogowski's got it this time. Just a snap over the head. Axel Newell wasn't ready for it. It's over his head. He can't reach it. Tries to go get it. Uh, you'd like to see him try to dive on it, but it kind of bounces out of his area. Stone Chaney and Kale Rogowski, two of their, their, their dogs on defensive line, just are in the backfield nine times out of ten. That time they get lucky. Uh, not lucky, but they get in the backfield and they get an opportunity to get a fumble there. You know, as if you're a defensive end, you, you're praying for that day, right? If you see the ball on the ground, you want to pick it up and run. Really good job there by CC. You know, that's, that's again, St. Mary's shooting themselves in the foot a little bit there. You're marching. You know, you have an opportunity to take the lead again uh, late in the second quarter. Uh, and then receive the ball again at half. You know, just I think a missed opportunity by them uh, that hopefully won't you know hurt them if CC puts some points on here. Jackson play action, setting up a screen in the hands of Krieger. Lee Krieger first down and pushed out of bounds along the sidelines. One play, one first down for Catholic Central. Coming up on a minute to go in the half. Coming in this game, Lee Krieger had one catch. 59 yards and a touchdown. Uh, caught a really good pass versus Toledo CC down the sideline. Bo Jackson was getting you know attacked by the D line of the Toledo CC. Lofts the ball out there on the sideline to Lee Krieger. Uh, he took it about 60 yards for the touchdown. He's another guy that I think they can get involved in the screen game right. You know he's a guy that can really get on the edge and, and really punish the the tacklers trying to tackle him. Jackson quick drop. Bo Jackson throwing again. It's incomplete. Oh, the receiver on that sidelines is pleading, saying, oh, come on, man, I came down with this, but apparently Nico McBride did not. Bo Jackson just throwing the goal ball here, giving his guy an opportunity. Duke Coates in coverage, kind of you know, gets ahead of the receiver, and it looks like McBride might have been in there. You know, If they had replay, I bet they'd review that there, but nonetheless, you know, it looked like a catch from our eyes, but the refs saw it differently. No matter what, that is a heck of an effort by McBride. Absolutely. Jackson to throw again. And he throws short of Krieger. And he's getting pressured there by Antonio Johnson, uh, you know, one of their guys you know, that starts on O-line. And, and Coach Gonzalez uh, said that he, in his opinion, is one of the best tackles in, in the country uh, for his age at that position. Big fella, 6'5", 300 pounds. Plays defense when they need him, right, in the, in the, in the tough situations. In, in, in a situation like this where they're trying to get pressure on Bo, does a good job of getting in the backfield, making that throw, you know, a little, little you know, over the head or, or at the feet. Um, you know, but nonetheless, Bo Jackson there getting rid of the ball, you know, and not taking a sack. You'd like to see that. And this is going to become third down and longer. Field goal range for the kicker, Madigan. He made a 40-yarder last year. Where the ball sits right now, that's the 37. That would be tough for an NFL kicker. All CC's thinking about right now, third down long. Jackson given time. Bo stepped been up and tripped up. There's the guy who had the blocked punt. Aiden Donovan, he's all over the place. Mm -hmm. He's a baller for him. Uh, you know, Coach said best kept streaker, right? A guy that hasn't put a lot of tape out there because he's a baseball player. He's new to new to the St. Mary's offense, or excuse me, St. Mary's team, uh, and a guy that they want to see have a really good season for them. Uh, you know, just uh, flies around. Uh, had a 70-yard strip sack touchdown against uh, Toledo St. John's when they played. Uh, so just a guy that really you know commands respect uh, and, and commands attention when you're uh, you know an offensive coordinator trying to get around that defense. St. Mary's gets the ball to start the second half. Justin Sasante will call one of those timeouts for Catholic Central before the punt. You think that's why St. Mary's not calling a timeout here because they know they're about to get it to start the half, maybe? Yeah, I mean, you just you want to make it into the half, you know, 
in the situation you're in, you're, you know, you're only down two points here, you know, going eight seconds left. Uh, you know, maybe they didn't see, you know, Sasante saw something they didn't like, right? They've already had one blo uh, blocked punt. Yeah. Uh, they want to, you know, don't want another one here late in the second quarter. Uh, so, you know, they're just going to run through the game plan. They're going to do a punt safe, you know, bring everyone in or just bring your, your best blockers in at the point of attack and try to avoid any costly mistakes with eight seconds left. St. Mary's touchdown came on a blocked punt by Donovan that was fallen on in the end zone for a touchdown by Vincent Lazar. Catholic Central's touchdown was a long pass from Jackson to Pyden. Catholic Central also had to kick a 33-yard field goal after they had a third down and goal from the one. A legal formation wiped out a touchdown, then a sack, and they were forced to kick a field goal. Yeah, and I think we were both wrong here. I think they're going to take a shot here, right? Eight seconds left. You know, you miss it. You, know, you leave a few seconds on. You can let your defense play prevent. I think they're going to take a shot here, which I think is a smart opportunity, right? You're in enemy territory. you got a good quarterback that can make a lot of throws. Give him an opportunity. Let you know, Throw a little Hail Mary out there. Three wide receivers near side of your screen. And now Catholic Central calls another timeout. As a wise man once said, they're not like cell phone minutes. They don't roll over. I need to stop making that reference because I don't think that applies anymore. So State Champ Sports Network started all the way back in 2002, over two decades ago. And for the first ever show in August, where else to go but Catholic Central, which was located in Redford on Breakfast Drive at the time to hand out the first ever School Spirit Award. In case you're wondering why Catholic Central still goes by Detroit Catholic Central, even though it's had stops in Redford and now Novi, when the school was founded, it was founded in Detroit on Outer Drive. School hasn't been located in Detroit for many decades now, but as the t-shirts like to say, Catholic Central was born in Detroit. Shamrock staring down a fourth down and long. Jackson fielding the snap. He is going to take that shot, and it's incomplete. Catholic Central bench thinks there may have been some illegal contact. It's not going to come. And now we'll see how St. Mary's plays it with about four seconds to go. You got to imagine that, you know, with the, the turnovers that they've had, you know, play it safe, get into half, you know, and don't shoot yourself in the foot any more than you already have. Uh, but, but there they're just trying to run a little levels concept. Uh, they tried to get their one of their best athletes, Jaden Pyden, open on the sideline to you know open up an opportunity maybe for a field goal with a few seconds left or another shot to the end zone. But they had one of their uh, uh, you know St. Mary's had one of their best athletes covering them and Bryson Williams, number five. So you know that's a matchup uh, that you know, I'm excited to look forward to this uh, this uh, second half. At least one more snap for Axel Newell. 6'4 junior, a transfer from Ovid Elsie. It's in the middle of Michigan, a Division VI school. Axel coming over to play football and hoops at St. Mary's. Threw four picks in the season opener against Adams, and then threw three touchdowns last week against De La Salle. He takes an E here with a lot of ball game to go after two quarters of ball. A good old-fashioned rock fight in the Catholic League. St. Mary's seven, Catholic Central nine. Bo Jackson's long touchdown to Jaden Pyden so far is ruling the evening. St. Mary's will stay on the field. Catholic Central will vacate to their locker room. Shamrocks with a lead after a couple of quarters. Elizabeth Kuhn on the sideline standing by with Catholic Central coach Justin Sasante. Hey, I'm joined by Coach Sasante. I mean, some really big plays late in the second quarter. What momentum does that bring for the second half? Yeah, a big play there, but it's an old school Central Division, uh, you know, hard fighting football game. So we just have to be a little bit more disciplined in the kick game and just get our tempo on offense. I think we'll be all right. Been playing pretty well on defense. Yeah, and what's going to be the message heading into the locker room? A little bit more energy, a little bit more sense of urgency and uh, do what we do. Get a little bit outside of our uh, what we what we typically do and what works. So we just want to get back to basics here. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Coach. Okay, thank you. Back to you guys. All righty, Liz, thank you. If anyone would know about a good old-fashioned Catholic League matchup, it's Justin Sasante. He's been involved in just a couple of these over the years. We've hit halftime at Catholic Central. Shamrocks 9, Eaglets 7. 
Halftime comment. It's all the buzz. Hungry? Howie! At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Senebogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Every high school sporting event in the state of Michigan has one thing in common, officials. Every game, every meet, every match. Without officials, there'd be no touchdowns, no three-pointers, no face-offs. Without officials, there'd be no games. Officiating is a great way to give back to your community and stay involved with the sports you love. And officials are needed now more than ever because without officials, it's just practice. Welcome back to State Champs Extra Point. Time to chat up the 2023 Michigan Mr. Football Contest presented by Hungry Howie's. Sean Belisian, how you doing, my friend? Oh, tremendous. Uh, you know what, uh, Lauren? Every week there are just fantastic games. Doing a great job, by the way, on ga Game Time Live. Uh, oh, yeah. loving, loving that, the work that you guys are doing, and uh, looking forward to another big week this week. Still no shakeups in our Mr. No. Football Top 10, but that could change soon. In the meantime, Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central's Ty Hudkins getting a lot of love this week. So Scott Bernstein talked about his decommitment to Northwestern and the fact that he is now once again looking for a college football home. I would imagine that the offers will be coming fast and furious because he is showing explosive talent on both sides of the ball. Yeah, it's it's huge. And I mean, if you don't recall, even before he committed to Northwestern, teams were all over this guy. So imagine with him playing the way he is right now, multi-sport star, but certainly Football seems to be his specialty. Wide receiver, safety, as you mentioned, Lauren, get 22 cups, interceptions, pick sixes. This kid is doing everything. And as you mentioned, there are going to be a lot of teams salivating over his services looking ahead to the class of 24. Yeah, it's real interesting. Hudkins was the seventh recruit to decommit from Northwestern since Pat Fitzgerald's firing. Northwestern's class is now ranked 99th in the country. Ouch! But for those of you in the Hudkins camp, what are you waiting for? Get out there and vote. Right now, as far as the voting is concerned, it's pretty much a two-man race between the leading vote-getter, Bryce Underwood, and Waterford Mott's Caleb Osborne. And I always feel like it's our duty to remind people why the voting is important. It is so important because you automatically give yourself a chance to get into our Final Four, and you get those extra bonus points that when applied, when we go through our process, this is the reason why we bring up the process so much like boom there's our process this is what we live and die by so as you as you were saying Lauren this is a situation where listen mount up and start getting in those votes there's lots of weeks to go but don't dilly dally around get in and vote and make your vote count because this is going to be a fantastic class there's no doubt about that we talked about it at the beginning of the year forget about what happened last year it's all about what you do this year this isn't a lifetime achievement award this is what are you doing right now and hudkins is another one of those guys that is making his case for this season it's only takes a few minutes to go to the website statechampsnetwork.com and vote Hungry Howie's is celebrating 50 years of flavor, so visit your local Hungry Howie's today for all kinds of great deals or order online at HungryHowie's.com. What's up, Michigan? Time to get fired up for this week's State Champs Recruit Report with the incomparable Alan True. My name is Lauren Plant. We've got three guys we want you to know about, especially who's coming after them. Alan, let's start with Elijah Easley. Currently a River Rat with Ann Arbor Huron, doing pretty much whatever they ask of him on the field. The senior with several offers already on the table for his services. Who's the latest? Wayne State's the latest, and that's with Tyrone Wheatley at the helm now. 
uh, certainly attacking the state of Michigan. And I think he knows Ann Arbor pretty well, but easily has had a really, really good season so far. You mentioned do, you're doing a little bit of everything. He's a three phase guy. So running back safety mix plays on special teams, six foot one, 200 pounds. So I don't think the offer train is going to slow down for him. He came into the fall with six. He adds this Wayne state offer. And I think a lot of other schools are looking closely at him because he is versatile and big. All right, well, let's move on. Let's talk a rising star, class of 2026, another quote-unquote athlete, dons a red and black for Divine Child. Marcello Vitti made an immediate impact as a freshman, picked up right where he left off as a sophomore, and I understand he won't be the first Vitti in his family to play college athletics. Has a brother playing football in Navy, right, and a sister playing lacrosse at Howard. Yeah, both parents were college athletes, but Marcello, like you said, immediate impact for Divine Child. You talk about another guy who can impact the game in multiple phases. You know, as a freshman was playing running back, made a big impact on the defensive side of the ball, went out and had some really good camps and picked up right where he left off so far this season. He's an offensive weapon. I think he'll probably end up in the defensive backfield come college, but Kentucky just offered him. He went down there and visited, and he has quite a few now. Both Michigan and Michigan State have offered. I think Penn State's going to be a real factor in that recruitment. I think uh, Stanford and some academic schools are going to be uh, a factor in that one as well. So a long way to go for him, but the options are certainly piling up for Mr. Beattie. Well, let's finish up with Jaden Walker, senior linebacker out of Portage Northern. The Huskies are 3-0 and to start the year, and Michigan State was able to flip him away from Toledo. Now, from what I read, I guess this happened just about an hour before the Richmond game. Yes, he came up to campus. Well, they had, they had offered him the night before, but him having – uh, just played a high school game and not knowing what he was going to do exactly yet waited till Saturday to come up to campus and then commit in person but it, it had also been in the works for quite some time he was outstanding at the Wayne State showcase that's when he first caught their eyes but he played all basically exclusively wide receiver a year ago and I right. think schools wanted to see his defensive tape from this year Michigan State had him to camp loved what they saw of him and still wanted to see that game tape from the beginning of this year and he's shown that he's picked up that position very quickly. So they offered him, and that was that was exactly what he wanted. So it didn't take too long for him to flip over. Well, obviously, Michigan State is in the news. And I'd like to get, before we let you go, your overall take on the instability right now at the program. If you compare it to Northwestern, since Pat, Pat Fitzgerald was let go, they've seen over a half dozen recruits go a different direction. You think you're going to see some of that happen at MSU? We're only a few months away from the early signing period. Yeah, I think they're going to have to work to keep these recruits. I know some schools are circling guys like uh, A.J. Dennis from Mount Pleasant, picked up new offers this week. Purdue came in and offered them. But I think at the moment, it's going to those recruits are in wait-and-see mode. And the wait-and-see, I think, is uh, who's going to stick from the staff. I know for like the offensive line, guys like Dennis, Chris Kapilovich has been a big part of their recruitment. For guys like Nick Marsh, it's going to be uh, guys like Courtney Hawkins who, who stay on that staff or not. Harlan Barnett's the interim head coach, extremely experienced and respected as a recruiter. So I think there's still a lot to figure out here. These recruits are certainly, I think, going to take a look at some options or at least start figuring out some plan Bs. But for the moment, the class is staying intact. And I think just waiting to see what happens in the next few weeks with this investigation. So in other words, to be continued. All right. He is Absolutely. Alan True. And we thank you for being here each and every week. We'll do it again next week. Sounds good, Lauren. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Hank. What's up, Michigan? Welcome back to another update in the 2023 Anvil Award competition presented by our friends at Hungry Howie's 50 Years of Flavor. The Michigan High School Football Coaches Hall of Famer and former Canton headman Tim Beckler is here to talk about another one of our candidates. Something tells me, Tim, first off, that when you were coaching the trench dwellers, the guys who do not often get the credit that they deserve were the ones you perhaps enjoyed the most coaching. No question. Uh, offensive line blocking kids that don't want to be blocked, uh, it's a underrated skill, and they don't get the uh, attention they deserve. So, uh, And your linebackers and your D linemen. You know, the guys are up there doing the dirty work. Uh, that's why I love this award. Yeah, absolutely. So if you head over to statechampsnetwork.com, click on the contest tab, you can vote for our current crop of hammers and headbangers. It is an impressive list stacked with Division I talent that could find their way playing on Sundays. That's what makes this even more fun. But right now, the task at hand is identifying the top linemen and linebackers in high school in the state. We're going north this week, way north. 
with Gaylord, to be exact. And like most of our guys, they're mixing it up on offense, even though they will play defense at the next level. The guys today just are super incredible athletes, maybe like we've really never seen before. Brady Pretzlaff is a student of the game. He's committed to Minnesota because he likes the way P.J. Fleck develops linebackers. And to Fleck's credit, he could be a star in the making. Absolutely. He uh, not only is a linebacker, will line him up at tight end, where he's a dominant physical blocker, and he'll line him up at split end, and he just makes plays. You know, he's, he's a real football player. But at linebacker, what really stands out, right now it seems like he's one of the bigger, faster kids on the entire field. I mean, it'd be pretty nice going out there knowing you're, yeah. you're pretty much the guy right. out there in the field from right. both teams. Uh, but he's very fast, he's a very physical player, great tackler in the open field, he plays sideline to sideline. And again, the natural guys can use their hands, get off blocks, shed, and then make tackles too. Uh, and he's excellent with doing that. Perhaps the best thing I like about him is his pass drops, and this is kind of an, mm. something that people don't talk That's right. enough about. Be, you know, some teams just area drop, kind of get to a grass or a spotty area where you know where the covers uh, tells them to be. Others take their drop based off on what receivers are doing. Um, he looks to be more of a spot dropper, but what he's so good at is keeping his head on a swivel looking for receivers and looking back at quarterback and he really reads the quarterback's eyes and gets an early break on the ball so he's deflecting intercepting uh, getting in throwing lanes he's really good at that too yeah this is one of kind of like the detroit lions fans have now with jack campbell another guy who is great at anticipating reading the quarterback and getting in that's a great uh, you know, description. I'm sure Brady loves that he's being compared to Jack Campbell. I'm not quite doing that yet, but um, yeah, the kid's good. 32 tackles, six tackles for loss, one sack already this season. Gaylord is 3-0 and for the first time since 2018, but it doesn't seem like Blue Devil Nation is going to bat for Brady. We want to see that vote count go up. So get there and do that. Currently, this is Jeremiah Beasley's world and the rest of the field is just living in it. So vote now at State Champs Network well, every week, Scott Bernstein and I, Lauren Plant, bring you the headlines of what's happening around the state of Michigan. This segment brought to you by CAM, the Construction Association of Michigan. Now, Bernie is always burning on news and notes in Michigan high school football for this segment. I will give the headline. Scott will break it down. Headline number one. Back on the market, this tie, ready to fly. Ty Hudkins, probably the best recruit on the west side. From Grand Rapids, HSAA's Megatron, best receiver in the state, has had a roller coaster of a recruiting uh, um, journey with Michigan State. He was committed, then he decommitted, then he recommitted to Mel Tucker before the season. Mel Tucker is now, it looks like he's gonna be out. He's on suspension. You know, as of the last 72 hours, uh, Nick Marsh has stayed firm, saying that he's going to stay with his commitment. Uh, Harlan Barnett, see how it works out. We'll see what happens. See you, Scott Bernstein. Thank we'll you. do it all again next week. At Hungry Howie's, we're famous for flavor, and this is our chief flavor officer. Every hour of every day, our CFO obsesses over the tastiest ingredients, combining them to create new flavor combinations your taste buds never knew they needed until now. Introducing his latest master pizza, the Bee Sting. Hot honey drizzle, classic cup pepperoni, and spicy jalapenos, or any two toppings. And our famous flavored crust. It's all the buzz. Hungry? Howie! At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Senebogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Every high school sporting event in the state of Michigan has one thing in common, officials. Every game, every meet, every match. Without officials, there'd be no touchdowns, no three-pointers, no face-offs. 
Without officials, there'd be no games. Officiating is a great way to give back to your community and stay involved with the sports you love. And officials are needed now more than ever because without officials, it's just practice. Hey guys, welcome back. Coming out of the break, I tried to talk to Coach Gonzalez. He had no words. He said, we have a game to win. Guys? Liz, uh, sometimes Jermaine Gonzalez is a man of few words. Apparently there, uh, the only message is go win the darn thing. And Grant Perry, as we approach the start of the second half, with Catholic Central leading St. Mary's 9-7. Remember, the only St. Mary's touchdown came on a blocked punt. What do you think Jermaine Gonzalez was cooking up in that locker room to try to get its e his eaglets across the finish line? Yeah, I mean, just motivation, right? Getting the guys going. You're in this game. It's 7-9. to nine. We're opening the second half uh, You know, on defense. Defense, go out there and get a stop. Go get us the ball back. Uh, you know, we've seen that CC will, you know, give us some you know some opportunities with some some bad throws you know or putting the ball on the ground so the opportunity is there go take it uh, and then CC if you're you know coach Sasante you're just preaching hey let's have a long drive a nice 12 14 play drive here could really be a backbreaker and a, just a big momentum swing for CC so look for these teams to both try to find their own their own flow on offense and defense uh, individually and, and try to get something going here and let's see what these halftime adjust adjustments are this is Catholic Central's first Catholic League game against a traditional opponent. Remember, it is a brave new world where there are Toledo schools now in the Catholic League, but this is a traditional matchup for Catholic Central. Dearborn, Toledo Central Catholic, Toledo St. Francis de Sales in the first three games. On the other side for St. Mary's, they just had a traditional game last week, lost to Warren de La Salle 41 to 27. And this game, at least two quarters in, looks completely different than the game they played last week. Yeah, and these teams are very similar match. I mean, like, different counterparts to each team, right? CC's offense and defensive line is kind of their strength. St. Mary's has skilled players that, that can go get it and make an explosive play happen at any point in the game. Uh, so these both of these teams are kind of, you know, trying to figure each other out, right? They haven't found exactly the right formula to keep these drives going. Uh, both are, you know, working with, you know, young, uh, you know, not fully experienced quarterbacks that are are still trying to find their rhythm uh, so that makes it hard on both play callers right you got to find things that you can you know convert on things you can move the ball on and with and schemes that work for you when you got a quarterback that you know you don't want to give him all the you know the, the ability to, you know, to, to, to mess things up so you know, expect teams to keep it both teams to keep it within themselves you know try to find a big play here and there but you know it's going to come down to time of possession and essentially who has the ball last year in the second half going to kick it away for Catholic Central. And this boot drives the St. Mary's returners back. And they watch it roll into the end zone for a touchback. Axel Newell bringing the troops back on the field. You know, number eight in red and white, Axel Newell, the quarterback for St. Mary's. Didn't throw it more than a handful of times in the first half. What do you think the offensive attack plan will be for St. Mary's in the second half? I think we're going to see some of the similar things we saw, right? Trying to spread it out to, to limit the numbers in the box, right? Try to give yourself an advantage uh, in the run game and then give throws to, to uh, Axel that he can complete and feels confident throwing. Right on cue, there's an easy completion to Duke Coates, wide open on that left side, and a solid gain on first down for St. Mary's. Yeah, and Duke Coates, man, he's, he's touched the ball a lot tonight. A uh, really good playmaker for them. Um, you know, he's got offers from Mount St. Joseph and, and Walsh, so he's, he's got some college attention, um, and he plays like it, man. You know, speedster in the slot, uh, can make a guy miss. Uh, he could have a, a big second half and really help them uh, you know, going forward. Newell throwing again. He's got it complete again. Big Jaden Savory bouncing off of bodies. The six foot six junior who is still learning this sport has a second catch of the first down. Still learning, but I mean, plays physical. Uh, and it, as we saw earlier in the game, Axel completed a pass to him very similar over the middle, uh, you know, in, in space of, of the CC defenders, uh, but trust his, his big tight end, six six, Jaden Savory to get open. And Savory, new to football, but already seeing a lot of college attention. On to the right side with a flag behind the play. The Eaglets get that run near the original line of scrimmage, but they've already indicated the flag is on St. Mary's. Yeah, and that's just, I mean, number 17, Stone Chaney. 
Uh, he's just a force. If you go back and watch the Dearborn game, the first two series, I mean, he's just bull rushing. I mean, a rip and dip. Uh, he has a lot of things in his arsenal that he can use, uh, and he needs to have a good second half to really help uh, CC get off the field uh, on defense. And you see it right there, right? He beats the guy up the field to tackle. What's the tackle have to do? He's got to hold him. Uh, so really good job there by Stone Chaney and, and Kale Rosowski coming on the backside to, to help uh, rally the tackle. In case you just heard that last name, Chaney, and you're thinking, that sounds familiar. Yes, that's Brian Chaney's son, Stone, and his other son, Rivers, also on the team. Newell throws, and he misses Janda. Second out and long. And I like what they do there, right? They, they, CC's going to be in a straight cover three 90% of the time, right? They'll, they'll mix in some man coverage, but right there you're going to see cover three, which means they got a middle of the guy in the field in Jaden Pyden. He's going to play in that center field. And you got two corners that are responsible for their third of the field all the way deep. Where does that leave you vulnerable? On quick outs. So look for St. Mary's to try to you know attack that area. Mill going downfield, incomplete, hoping for Savory. And River Cheney was in on the coverage. Another Cheney. Uh, you know, the bloodline runs deep. Uh, and another, you know, another scheme by St. Mary's that does beat cover three. You know, switch, release, goes, right? They're trying to get a guy up the seam. You're vulnerable to out routes uh, versus cover three as a defense and then also in the seam, right? Uh, you got to have a good corner that can really, you know, midpoint number two and number one receiver. Uh, they did a fantastic job there. Uh, Jaden Pyden with the, you know, the pass breakup, making it a hard, uh, hard conversion there. Third down a mile. They get it in the hands of Williams. Hoping for Bryson Magic, not going to come. Kyle Ewing rallies to the ball, and Catholic Central's defense stops St. Mary's on the Eagles' first drive of the half. And, and I guarantee you, Coach Sasante and the rest of that uh, Catholic Central staff emphasized get off the field on this first drive, right? We got to set the tone here and really take control of this game. And no better, no better way than to send your, your, your opponent back, you know, fighting for a fourth and you know, 20 dang near, and, you know, that's a good job by CC, uh, really, you know, pushing them back, you know, making them have to work for extra yards, and, and they're just, you know, they let Bryson catch the ball up short, number five, they're one of their best receivers. They say, hey, we'll come up and tackle you, though, big fella. We just don't want you to beat us deep. Barron punts it high into the night sky, and the fair catch made by Gash. Catholic Central has great starting field position at their 40. Ulta Quinman knows when it comes to getting your job completed on time, on budget, and on schedule, uptime matters. Ulta Equipment partners with the biggest names in construction with industry-leading service and support. Give them a call, 844-GO-TO-ULTA. Bo Jackson and the troops. Back in the field. Do I, do I come down and play the run or do I stay back and, and cover my zone? Right there, he reacts to the run and then uh, Bo Jackson makes a great throw right over his head to, to McBride. Here's Krieger slipping tackles and lowering his backside near the 45. Grant, you made such an astute point earlier this week. Lee Krieger continues the Catholic Central tradition, number 20 in blue and white. There's always got to be a shamrock wearing that neck roll. Somebody has to. Absolutely. And my question to you, Evan, you would know, is there actually a purpose for it or is it an intimidation factor? Oh, there's no purpose. Oh. You just want to look cool. Yeah, and it does. It looks fierce. I know I, if I'm playing defense and I see a guy run at me with a, a neck brace, I'm going to be a little bit less, you know, more likely to go low on that guy, try to bring him down with his legs. Right back to Krieger, and he's lowering his shoulder, a powerful run, gets him close to the first down. Nico Palazzetti's a busy man. I don't know if he's watching this ball game tonight, but if he is, somewhere Nico is looking at Lee and going, there we go, someone's still got my neck roll. Mm -hmm. And if he was taking a nap, he just rolled over in mid-nap, right? He, he felt it. That neck brace has you know vibrations that radiate all through the CC uh, you know, community. Uh, you know, but good job here by CC, right? You get a stop, uh, you stop St. Mary's' drive, and now you're moving the ball here. Needed a little, got a lot more. That is Cedric Williams coming on strong. First down, Catholic Central. Great job there. They're just running a little bit of a power right under center, one back power. They get Benny Azuka pull into the play side. Uh, and they're going to run tempo here and try to get something going here quick. Williams again, but not much at all. Maybe gained a couple of inches. That's Jack Janda in on the tackle. 
And in that last play, that was a really good job by Cedric, right? Uh, he kind of beat uh, Benny Azuka, the pulling guard, 75, to the point of attack. Uh, Benny Azuka would call a log block where he blocks the guy inside and the ball bounces, you know, falls right off the table is what they say. Uh, and then the running back just does the rest of the work. Good play there. It was third and one. They picked up about six or seven. Uh, and that's what you want, right? You want plays over five yards. Uh, I mean, Lee Krieger's averaging, averaging seven yards of pop coming into this game. So they want to try to get back to that rhythm. Jackson loads. Jackson throws. That pass is incomplete. Gash the intended target. And again, step for step in coverage, Darren Jones. Step for step. St. Mary's isn't allowing anything here uh, as far as, you know, that man coverage. They were saying, hey, we can cover your guy. You know, they're just going to run man coverage press, right? Darren Jones is in on Samson Gash. He knows, hey, I can't get beat deep. Really good job. Samson Gash looks like he's going to come down with it. But as a DB, you're taught play through the ball, play through the whistle. Even if that ball lands over your head as a defender, you wait until he has it in his arms and you try to pluck it out. Really good job. Almost. Almost, almost could have turned into a little bit of a, a, a steal there, and he almost grabbed it for an interception. So really good play there by Darren Jones. Third down, pitch Krieger. And he doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. What an open field tackle by White. Really good job there. And they just run the old school, you know, outside pitch, right? They get the pullers at, you know, at the point of attack. A uh, really good job there by number 11, uh, you know, uh, Charles White, also known as DJ. Uh, on tape, man, he is a he is a slim linebacker, 6'3", about 190 pounds. He's that safety hybrid type, right? Uh, you know, he plays it really well. He's one of their faster linebackers. Last year was all league. Uh, you know, so good play there. But, you know, when you got an athletic linebacker that's running free untouched, uh, he's going to make that tackle on the running back nine times out of ten. Catholic Central will go for it. Jackson stepping up. Jackson going down the field. Knocked away and complete. Gash looking for a flag. He's not going to get it. Coates on the coverage. St. Mary's stop. And, and talking with Coach this week, I asked him, hey, Coach, Susante for Catholic Central. I said, hey, what do you want out of your offense? What's one group that you want to see take a step forward this week? And he said, Samson Gash is, you know, is the guy that's really doing it for us at receiver. And we got a lot of other athletes that I want to see take another step, right? Uh, Bo Jackson, the quarterback for CC, that's his favorite target. Nine times out of ten, that's where he's going to go. Uh, but, you know, St. Mary's, they do their, you know, their homework as well. They can see that that's coming. They got two guys on them. Uh, not the best play there. Uh, you know, just CC's all, or St. Mary's is all over it. Into Williams' hands, trying to left side. Not very much. And St. Mary's once again facing second down long. Lawrence Technological University, located in beautiful Southfield, Michigan, and among the largest college of architecture and design in the nation. Go learn more. Visit ltu.edu. This is a new quarterback into the game for St. Mary's, by the way. And it's not going to work out. That is Gonzalez, coach's son, on the run. Not much, and it's third down. And sometimes at halftime, when, when, when the quarterback that isn't getting it done, you got to find a spark. Uh, and coach is going to put in uh, Jabin uh, Gonzalez, excuse me. Uh, you know, he's a really athletic kid, can run too. So I, I wouldn't expect, you know, be surprised if they try to get him involved uh, and try to make him the 11th player. Uh, another guy that they have to cover, uh, they as in CC, uh, is defense. Gonzalez pitches. Rollins lost the ball. It is loose again. St. Mary's fell on the football somehow and avoided their third turnover of the night. And you're just going to see here speed option, right? They're going to read the end, right? If that end crashes in at the quarterback, you're taught to pitch it, out leverage the defense. And they have it out leverage. They have great numbers. Uh, Armand Rollins just he can't catch it, right? It's a little bit of a high pitch. Uh, and that's just, again, that's, the, that's been the story with St. Mary's. It's just turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Luckily, they get, the, you know, they get the recovery, and they can try to flip this field position and give their defense a chance here on this next drive. Punt is high but short. Fair catch, well done by Gash sprinting up. And Catholic Central will start in prime field position inside St. Mary's territory. On Friday, September 22nd, it's the East Catholic High School's football reunion, hosted by Bishop Gallagher High School. It's going to be at Tom Adams Field on the campus of Wayne State for the game between CC and De La Salle. Please RSVP for this great event by this Monday the 18th 
you can scan the QR code in this video. Another shot for a Catholic Central offense that has a touchdown and a field goal tonight. Remember, that touchdown they scored, they had the extra point blocked. Mm -hmm. And the touchdown they did score on, that's a play you really you can't come back to too fast, right? Because it's, it's a very uh, one-time, one-trick pony kind of play uh, in the bubble and go. Ooh, Lee Krieger, neck roll and all, lowering the shoulder and gaining a first down for Catholic Central. Lee Krieger, man, he's just a, a force, man. He runs downhill, covers the ball with two hands. Look at those eyes. That's a scary fella right there. I wouldn't want to tackle that fella. Really hard runner uh, and just is, is a guy that they're going to count on from here and, and until you know Cameron can come back and help take some load off of him. Uh, Cameron Lloyd, that is, number 22. He's out this week uh, you know, with a, with a you know, foot injury. So you know, best regards to him, and hopefully he can get back here soon. Krieger again. Room again. Lee Krieger, touchdown. Just a fantastic job here. Bo's just going to give Lee Krieger the ball again, right? That guy's hot. Why not feed him? But look at the offensive line push. I mean, those D linemen and linebackers are getting pushed back on their back. I saw two pancakes in that one play. And Lee Krieger, I mean, maybe a hand, maybe two hands touched him, and that's not going to take him down. I mean, the way he's running today is just fierce, right? And then you give him an opportunity to really hit a hole and really go 100%. I mean, it's, it's lights out there. And you see Cameron Lloyd there giving him a little bit of a dap there, a little bit of love. Uh, you know, that's good to see. And that's what CC needed there. Uh, they needed a good drive, right? They get a stop, uh, they stop St. Mary's offense, and then they capitalize. A good drive. CC looks to have the hot, looks to, like they have the hot hand coming out of halftime here. Extra point was good. Two score game. The bloodlines for the guy who just scored the touchdown, Lee Krieger, are Catholic Central, Valiant Blue, and Peerless White Thick. His dad, Lee, a state champion wrestler at Catholic Central. Also went on to play some college football at Wisconsin. Grant, I echo what you just said. I really don't want to tackle a guy who looks like that. Mm -mm, that is some fierce face paint. That's a warrior, not Brother Rice. That's just a Catholic Central Shamrock warrior right there with that eye paint. He's running hard. He's helping this team uh, move the ball, and, and he's uh, playing a pivotal role. A uh, vivid role here uh, early on, early on here in the second half for Catholic Central. Shamrock score again. Get this thing up to a two-possession ball game. Gonzalez came in a quarterback on the last drive for St. Mary's, which uh, lends you to wonder who's going to be quarterback on this drive. It's a fair question. Um, I'd be interested to see. You know, that was one bad pitch by uh, by Jabin there, Jabin Gonzalez. Uh, you know, I'd like to see him get that back into the, the running back's chest to give him an opportunity to, to, to secure that edge. Um, but, you know, we'll see who they go with here. Both quarterbacks are, kind of, you know, turnover, turnover prone. So whoever gives them the best chance at winning tonight, I think we'll see out here on this next drive. Short kick return coming from the 20. Patterson slipped a tackle, and then the convoy came to get him. He won't even reach the 30. Long way to go, this Catholic Central football team dreaming of a state title and a trip to Ford Field Thanksgiving weekend. Catholic Central as an athletic program knows something about winning state titles. Last year, a couple more into the case. Wrestling won its sixth state title in the last eight years. Mitch Hancock's club rolling off another state championship. And then later on, hockey team did it again. Rinse repeat for the Shamrocks on the ice. Four straight Division I state championships. This year they won 3 0 over Brighton. And it is kind of funny, Grant, seeing the changing rivalries for Catholic Central. St. Mary's always a rival, Brother Rice always a rival. But since the school has moved to Novi, new schools like Novi, Northville, Brighton, those have become Shamrock rivals as well. Absolutely. You, you move into someone's territory, they're going to be a little, you know, they're going to want to protect it. So, you know, yeah, they got some rivals out here in this area, uh, but you know, makes for great football and, and great stuff to watch. Newell back in the game. They finally got it in the hands of Bryson Williams, and for the first time tonight, that explosive junior got loose. 
Mm -hmm. and, and Catholic Central, credit to their defense uh, and Coach Raymond Taylor here, uh, just doing a fantastic job of kind of keeping everything in front. You know, right? They'll let Bryson catch the ball, and they're just swarming. They want five, six hats on the tackle. Uh, there, Bryson showed a little bit of speed, showed a little bit of juicy, uh, juiciness there, got to the edge. Uh, but, you know, if he can get in space, that's when he's really dangerous. A little bit of space up the middle as well on the run for Trey Goyke. St. Mary starting to move into Catholic Central territory. No, Goyke's real first name is not Trey, but he's Richard III. Newell going deep. His man has a step, but he missed him. Down the sidelines. Chapman was open, but Newell missed him. And in these, these these rivalry games, right, the Catholic League, you know, openers for some teams here, you got to hit those opportunities. You're not going to get much of those. That guy, you know, Chapin was you know five six yards open right there. Uh, you know you got Newell who, who's playing okay today. You want him to hit that right to build that confidence. That's the same throw we saw Bo Jackson hit earlier today to kind of help him uh, take a step in the right direction this afternoon. Needed a few, got a lot more. Goyke again, first down, St. Mary's. Trey came back from last year's team. Couple of good runs on this drive. Newell throws, pass caught. Savory slip and tackles, and another solid gain for St. Mary's. Good gain there, and they're putting their tight end, their big 6'6", uh, you know, first year into football. You know, he's a hooper uh, for the basketball team at St. Mary's, Jaden Savory. They're putting him on the edge uh, on a cornerback, right? They're going to give him the free access, right? Southern Central plays that off coverage, and they want to get the ball into the big guy's hands who can make people miss, and that's a mismatch in field uh, if you're a cornerback tr trying to tackle a big guy here. This is a drive killer. Newell's got to run back and fall on the football. It was second and one from the 30. Now it's going to be third down, and St. Mary's doesn't want to know how much. You know, just a, a tough situation there if you're St. Mary's, man. you gotta, you got to limit these, these costly you know, mistakes, right? You had a third down and manageable, third down and one, and now you're facing you know, 20, you know, 15 yards, uh, you know, a third down and 21 to be exact. You, know, you really got to, if you want to get in this game, you got you to you know, keep the ball in your possession. Newell given the time. It is he threw, and he threw incomplete. And no choice. They got a punt. Mm -hmm. And Jaden Savory is looking at the quarterback. Hey, I, I mean, I'm not 6'9, but, you know, Jaden Savory didn't see that Stone Chaney, number 17 defensive end, you know, was in that uh, backfield causing a, causing a little bit of a hurry up for, for Al, uh, Axel Newell. Uh, you know, that's what kind of caused the, the, the over, uh, you know, over the head uh, incompletion. And that it's just complimentary football, right? You know, St. Mary's, I'd say, has a little bit of the skill position advantage, right? And Bryson Williams and, and guys that can just get it and go to, you know, 60 mile per hour in, in, in 1.2 seconds. Uh, but Catholic Central has a really good defensive line, right? And that helps those secondary players stay in coverage. Uh, when the quarterback's getting pressured, he can't make those easy throws. It's a really good job, really good complimentary football there by Catholic Central. Another punt. Gash lets this one bounce, and it checks up. Rolls out of bounds right around the 30. There's a flag in the play. They're consulting with the Catholic Central coaching staff. In case you're just tuning in and seeing the 16 to seven score, Keep this in the back of your mind. As the call and illegal formation on the St. Mary's punt that moves the Catholic Central starting field position up a little more. It's a 16-7 game, but Catholic Central's defense is pitching a shutout. The only St. Mary's touchdown came on a block punt that they recovered in the end zone. It's really impressive. And talking to Coach Cassante this week, I asked him, I was like, do you guys like the blitz? Like, what's your base structure, right? He said, we're going to be running a 4-4, cover three, right? And we're going to pretty much stay in it. We like to lull you to sleep, you know, and just keep everything in front of us. And they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, St. Mary's has a lot of skilled players that can really go get it, and they're just taking them out of the game right now. Krieger on the run, not going to the house this time. In fact, he lost a yard as the St. Mary's defensive line rallying to the ball, led by Ryan Fresquez, their middle linebacker. 
Ryan didn't start the year as a starter, but the sophomore has already risen up the depth chart, and he just made a nice play. Clock running. This next snap could end up being the final play of the third quarter. And a flag. Did we just get the ultra rare false start on the center? You know, that's it must have just you know shook the ball just a little <laughs> bit. Uh, and those are those fun plays you'll see in college, right? When or in NFL, when those guys, you know, rest of the O line just sits there and stands still, and, and everyone else is playing. Uh, that's usually because the, the center, you know, just slightly moves the ball a little bit enough for the refs to notice and uh, cost them five there. Catholic Central doesn't have to snap it again in the third. They won't. Off we go to the fourth. Only touchdown of the half belongs to Catholic Central. A Lee Krieger touchdown run. On to the fourth. Catholic Central leading the ball when you come on back. At Hungry Howie's, we're famous for flavor, and this is our chief flavor officer. Every hour of every day, our CFO obsesses over the tastiest ingredients, combining them to create new flavor combinations your taste buds never knew they needed until now. Introducing his latest master pizza, the Bee Sting. Hot honey drizzle, classic cup pepperoni, and spicy jalapenos, or any two toppings, and our famous flavored crust. It's all the buzz. Hungry? Howie's! At Alto Equipment, we know when it comes to getting your job completed on budget and on schedule, uptime matters. Alto Equipment has partnered with the biggest names in construction, including Volvo, Leboy, Senebogan, Avant, ASV, and more to provide the state of Michigan with industry-leading service and support. Alto Equipment services all makes and models, and their technicians are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Do you have a big project? Alta Rents has you covered with the most diverse rental fleet in Michigan. Give them a call at 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. Every high school sporting event in the state of Michigan has one thing in common, officials. Every game, every meet, every match. Without officials, there'd be no touchdowns, no three-pointers, no face-offs. Without officials, there'd be no games. Officiating is a great way to give back to your community and stay involved with the sports you love. And officials are needed now more than ever because without officials, it's just practice. Welcome back, everybody, to Detroit Catholic Central. Alum are on the broadcast with us today. Take a look at this throwback. Kevin, our technical director, who graduated in 2007, and good old Evan, who graduated in 2014. We love a good throwback. All credit to John Kidd on this one. I thought I burned that photo. That's horrible. You couldn't have used the photo of me looking athletic and playing football? How rude. Thanks, Liz, I guess. Anywho, we start the fourth quarter with Catholic Central football, second out and long. Jackson's going to throw, and it's caught by Python, tripped up in the open field, and it's going to be third down and shorter. Grant, did, did you know that photo was coming? I did not. I was not a part of the setup, uh, nor do I want to be blamed. <laughs> I know you don't. You look good, though. No, know. I didn't. You did. That's the thing. No, it was a horrible haircut. Still had the full back body. It was terrible. Anyway, it's third down and long. What do you think Catholic Central is going to run? Uh, you know, it's third down and, you know, about nine yards here. Um, you know, you've been having some success with uh, Jaden Pyden. I'd look to try to get him up the seam. Um, and then if he's not open, you know, if I'm Bo Jackson, I'm working back down. I'm, I'm trying to hit a short concept to allow them to, you know, to a playmaker like Samson Gash or, or McBride or Andrew Kitchens to make a play underneath and turn it into a first down. Delay before the snap. St. Saint Ma Saint Mary is going to get fresh bodies on the field.
Jackson in the shotgun. And you're going to get man coverage here. You see how all these cornerbacks are on a line, on a string right here? It's essentially cover zero. Um, so look for them to try to hit a man beater here. Jackson with time. Stepping up and throwing incomplete. Knocked away by Duke Coates. Once again, strong coverage as they were hoping for Johnson over the middle. Yeah, and just, uh, you know, in that situation, that's a, that's a battle for the ball. That's, that's receiver versus cornerback, man coverage, mano y mano in the middle of the field. You know it's cover zero, so no one else is going to be in the area, right? You're going to have the ability to catch it, get down safely, or try to break a tackle. Right there, you know, number four, um, you know, just tries to get across the field. Uh, Noah Semp, or Nathan Semp, excuse me, he's got to win flat, right? He kind of faded, which gave Duke Coates an opportunity to undercut it and get a deflection. I'd like to see him take that nice and flat, and then I think they would have had a conversion. St. Mary's fair catch. They're going to start right around the 35-yard line. Friendly reminder for you that state champs cover. Uh, in, that, in that situation, right, they went condensed. Two receivers on each side, two by two, and they went real tight, right, right next to the line of scrimmage, uh, excuse me, the lineman, uh, which allows them to get into the flats right away, and the quarterback has a nice, easy read, makes a good throw, a uh, good catch there by number 15, Duke Coates. Domino down, trying to get the first down. Once again, they get the ball in the hands of Bryson Williams. And they do move the sticks right away. That's a Eaglet's first down. A lot of time to go. Ten and a half remaining. St. Mary's has all three timeouts. This drive does feel darn important. Feels important. And as the, as the game goes on, every snap matters. Uh, and let's see if it, Duke Coates can get a catch and a run here. That's a catch and a strong open field tackle. Andrew Kitchen makes the tackle is once again, Coates makes the catch. And they're just doing a good job, right? They're in this cover three defense, Catholic Central, which means the flat defender has to you know, kind of get depth and get width, right, to, to take anything deep in that deep hook curl flat area. Uh, right now they're just sending him immediately to the flat. Uh, I'd like to see if CC kind of adjusts to that a little bit and takes that away here. Newell throws, pass caught. First time today, Jand has got the ball in his mitts. Another first down for St. Mary's. And they're going tempo here. You know, obviously, you know, down two scores, you got to do something quick with efficiency and urgency. Uh, and one thing about Newell, man, he can get rid of that ball quickly. And that was a really good job. He hit his open receiver uh, in this cover three zone. They're going to be open areas in the middle of the field, and he finds him uh, his receiver right there for a good completion. Pressure coming down. He goes. Kale Rogowski. He finally got home. Kale Rogowski, I mean, he's, he's third on the team in tackles and second on the team for TFLs behind Stone Chaney. He's just going to come unblocked. The running back has to step over there and help, right? You, you look for a chip or, or some type of assistance on, on a really good defensive end. Uh, you know, and, and you notice that you know, it's kind of away from Antonio Johnson, their, their best left tackle. Uh, so really good job there by CC, uh, getting a, a good uh, sack there. This is Goyke on the run. Not a whole heck of a lot. They were trying to make it third down and shorter. And still third down and pretty darn long. Yeah, I mean, just it, it's the constant, you know, having to fight, you know, 10, 15, 12 yards of, of, on third down. It, it's not winning football, and St. Mary's just can't find a way out of it. They are just consistently in these tough situations, uh, and they need to play from a playmaker here. Newell down the field, hoping for a play, nearly got it. Williams in double coverage almost made the catch. Almost did. Early on when that ball was in the air, I, I got a little nervous. I saw three CC defenders all you know colluding to the ball. Uh, you know, Bryson Williams, it looked like it hit him in the hands here. You're just gonna see Alex Newell, Axel Newell, excuse me, just drop back, take a three-step drop and let it fly. Uh, you know, in double coverage, Jaden Pyden, middle of the field. Uh, does a good job of getting a hand in there and really just def you know, deflecting the pass. Uh, and that's a catch that uh, Bryson Williams uh, on tape makes in big games. He's got to make that, especially tonight. Uh, I expect him to make that. Nonetheless, CC gets off the field on third down again. And St. Mary's punting again. Can they pin Catholic Central deep? Not really. Gash makes a fingertip catch right around the 20. <laughs> Hungry Howie's a great partner of the State Champs Networks, Mr. Football and Anvil Awards. Congrats, Hungry Howie's, on 50 years of the best flavored crust pizza. Go order your pizza at HungryHowie's.com. 
All right, Grant, we just said it was a really important drive for St. Mary's. Eight and a half to go, up two scores. It's a pretty important drive for CC. Yeah, it is. And, and if you're CC here, you know, you want to use the clock to your advantage. Uh, you know, and it's in their DNA, right? They, they know how to run the ball well. Uh, they know how to you know, manage the time. Uh, and, and they're going to put uh, together a few plays here that they think will get them, you know, an opportunity to have a short distance here on third down if they are presented with one. And you're going to see him come out in Wildcat here with Jaden Pyden. Jaden running right. A little bit of room. Takes a whole flock of eaglets to bring him down. Jaden had the first touchdown of the night for Catholic Central. A long passing touchdown from Jackson. The other was a touchdown run from Krieger. The run for Lee was his second touchdown of the year. Pyden already has two running touchdowns and now one catch for a touchdown. Tonight he's lined up at quarterback, running back, and wide receiver. He really is like Booby Miles. Mm -hmm. He can fill up the water jug. He hasn't passed yet, but maybe he can pass. Uh, I bet he can. He's a baseball player, so I wouldn't put it past him. But they're going to put this ball in his hand again and let him kind of just dictate the, the flow of the game here. Right up the gut. Jaden Pyden spinning ahead. Catholic Central first down. There's a whole heck of a lot of history here at Catholic Central on the football field. And one of the finest high school football teams in the history of the state belongs at this high school. 2009, the Catholic Central Shamrocks had one of the finest teams in the history of the state. There's Nico in that neck roll. Here's the highlights of the has had cracks time and again to get back to the state championship. But they haven't won one since 2009. Couple of losses in the state title to Cast Tech and one to Clarkston amongst the mitts. You know, there is a guy who did not lose in state championship games. There is a guy who just made plays time and again in the Catholic League. It's the guy I happen to be calling the game with. This is the obligatory Grant Perry Burns Catholic side. And he gains maybe a yard. In all seriousness, you got one Shamrock from Catholic Central calling the game, a former Brother Rice Warrior. And we kid and joke about rivalries, but I think a lot of you folks who have found this game tonight, you probably have some Catholic League ties and the bonds that form in this conference, whether you went to De La Salle, CC, St. Mary's, Brother Rice, and now all the Toledo schools that are, that are joining the fun, it lasts well beyond the last time you actually play on the field in any sport. This is Lee Krieger, a touchdown saving tackle made. He nearly got loose, and unfortunately, he's a little slow to get up. I mean, when you're carrying all this weight on your back, you know, it's going to be hard to get up sometimes. But here, Lee Krieger just following his pulling tie, tight end. They're just going to run a tight end power. It finds a good hole. The offensive line is just, you know, just saying, hey, we're going to take over this game, and you guys just put it on our backs. Uh, and hopefully Lee Krieger here is okay. You know, he's a little slow to getting off the field. And so there's going to be some free hitters. And right there, Bryson Williams does a fantastic job coming off the edge and, and making a play there. Shamrock's killing some clock. Give Williams a little bit of yardage for Cedric, making it third down. Cameron Lloyd, the normal starting running back for Catholic Central, injured, not playing in this game. Also, their top wide receiver, Nico Genrich, unfortunately suffered an injury. He's also out. So this Catholic Central offense grant, with no Genrich at wide receiver, no Lloyd at running back, still in a bit of state of flux. That's why guys like Cedric Williams are getting a lot of run tonight. Next man up, and this is where you start building your legacy, right? The, the things you remember forever. You know, when you have an opportunity to step up on a stage like this, you know, as an underclassman, uh, you know, and Cedric Williams, uh, he's been doing a fantastic job tonight. Compliments to the, to the young fella. Third down, Jackson dropping. Tried to find Williams, but it got knocked away. White was there, step for step, and that does stop the clock. Yeah, stops the clock, you know, and they're, the St. Mary's is going to get the ball back here, but really good uh, diagnose, uh, diagnosing the play there by, uh, by DJ White, also known as Charles. Fantastic job. He's a sideline to sideline guy. A lot, of, a lot of linebackers in the high school level get lost in the shuffle, right? They see a quarterback drop back. They're either blitzing or they're dropping right into coverage. Uh, you know, Charles White does a fantastic job of uh, latching onto his man and, and making a play there. Punt for Ewing. Rolling. 
Will it stop rolling? Oh my goodness. Shamrocks did their best, but it does end up rolling to the end zone. And it's a touchback for St. Mary's. Coming up next week, we head to the mighty Mac Red for our next game time live broadcast between Macomb, Dakota and Chippewa Valley. Join myself, Grant, and Big Lex, Lexi Ayala, on Friday, September 22nd, 7 o'clock. Looking forward to that one. Last year, Macomb, Dakota had an awesome team but lost in the regional final to Cass Tech. Off to a great start this year. That pass is batted down. Newell had it knocked down by Stone Chaney. I mean, and you, you blink your eyes and Stone Chaney's in the backfield. Uh, it just The pressure he applies is, is just astronomical. And I don't think that's a word, but I'm fumbling over my words because I'm just so excited by Stone Chaney's play here. I mean, look at him get into the backfield and just cause havoc uh, for Axel Newell. Does a fantastic job of getting those hands up. And that was a concern I had you know, regarding Axel's throwing. Uh, is he going to be able to get it over the D-line or manipulate the throw right there? Uh, Stone Chaney gets the best. Newell throws, caught by Coates. Duke made a couple of men miss. He's still on his feet. What a play, Duke Coates. And St. Mary's has got a pulse. Big play there by Duke Coates. You know, getting back to their out routes here. I mean, they're just, it's free. Why not take it? Uh, and I don't think CC is going to, you know, really adjust right. They want to just keep everything in front of them. Uh, right there, Duke Coates makes them pay, though, makes you know a couple guys miss. A uh, really good job by Coates. He's a guy that really pops off on tape, explosive playmaker. Uh, you know, but right now the, the the free access on the outsides is there. Those linebackers are, are a little bit slow to, to, to match that that flat you know area where they're supposed to be responsible for guarding. Uh, so good job there, good conversion. Way to move the sticks, uh, but we do have a player down, so uh, hopefully he uh, is okay. To his feet. Good news. That's Chapman popping up. Awesome sign. Last time St. Mary's won a state title back in 2016. What a great game against the mighty Big Reds of Muskegon. Orchard Lake St. Mary's in a back and forth ball game gets a late score, hangs on to win 29-28 for a Division III championship, ends up being the eighth state title all time. There's been a lot this drive and last, uh, but here we go, it's first and 10 at the 50. Uh, let's see if they can get the ball moving. Goyke on the run, a lot of room. Another solid gain on first down as the clock keeps on ticking. Give again. First down St. Mary's. Trey Goyke will not go down. And the Eaglets are moving. And Trey Goyke, he's a kid that, you know, 11-4, 100-meter dash in track. I mean, a 4-5, 4-6 kid uh, in the 40-yard dash. Really explosive in between the tackles and, and when he has an opportunity to really hit a hole. Newell quick drop. Axel throw it. Deep downfield, incomplete. Hoping for Zane Wilson. The Lawrence Tech Blue Devil football team back in the field. Tomorrow, Saturday the 16th. Taking on St. Francis from Illinois. Catch the game live on TV 20 Detroit at noon. More info at ltuathletics.com. Michigan State doesn't play until 5, and Michigan doesn't play until 7.30. You have no excuse not to watch Lawrence Tech football tomorrow. Second out for Newell. Pass caught. That's Aiden Donovan, who's made plays on every single end of the ledger tonight. A rule that the clock keeps on rolling. He didn't get out of bounds. Mm. And you got to, as soon as you catch that ball in these situations, you got to turn outside, get as many yards as you can, but get out of bounds and help the team save some time. Third down, Newell throwing, and it's batted down again. This time it's Rogowski. And they just bring the pressure, man. They, they got about five guys blocking, uh, maybe six if the running back stayed in. Uh, so, you know, you got to get rid of it quick, and you know that as a quarterback. Uh, but the pressure is just insurmountable. I mean, Kale Rogowski copies his, his fellow mate, Stone Chaney, gets his hands up and does a really good job there deflecting the pass. Fourth down for St. Mary's. Give Goyke. That's your ball game. Stone Chaney again, putting a cherry on top of the Sunday for Catholic Central. 
Fourth and short here. You got to have it. It's the end of the game. But Stone Chaney has it more. Fantastic job of just getting in that backfield and just applying a really good amount of pressure here late in the game and really just putting his mark as a defender that won't be stopped. Uh, that defensive line here, this last drive, I know they've been moving the ball. St. Mary's moved the ball all the way into CC territory. But Catholic Central defensive line showed why Coach Desante said that they're one of their best units defensively. The game isn't over. There's 2.24 left. St. Mary's has all three timeouts. But Catholic Central up two scores, 2.24 to go. That fat lady is, uh, she's starting to warm up. Starting to do her vocal exercises. There's a little bit of your CC alum coming out right there. You're like, oh, it's over. Oh, let me, let me back it up. You know, anything can happen. A lot of turnovers in this game. You never know. We've seen weirder things happen, but you're right. The fat lady, she's approaching the deck. She's stuck there and giving St. Mary's an opportunity to, to, with a little bit of time left to kind of game plan here and try to figure out, you know, hey, maybe we can get the ball back and make, try to make something happen. Uh, good play there by uh, DJ White, also known as Charles. Really good player for them. Uh, you know, bright future ahead for him. I don't think that play was in Tom Mack's playbook. Did Tom Mack run much uh, Wildcat back in the day? No. no. Wasn't in the playbook, Grant. New times, new times. Indeed. I think there were four plays out of the shotgun. Jaden Pyden gives to Williams, spinning ahead, getting across the 20. And St. Mary's is going to burn timeout number two. Okay, so Catholic Central. 2.07 to go, get a first down here, the game's over. Looking ahead for Catholic Central, they go to Warren D. LaSalle, who plays their home games at Wayne State. That's next week. Then, boys ball against Bron. You don't have to answer that question. Pyden running on third down. He is spun down, inbounds, so a timeout's got to be called. One more timeout for St. Mary's and one more tackle for Darren Jones. Darren Jones has really stepped up uh, tonight and has really showed that he can be a versatile player. He can play in the box and come up and be a, a physical player, uh, but also has done a good job on the perimeter, you know, really getting involved in the in the pass breakup, you know, had a really good deflection, uh, almost an interception uh, takeaway from Samson Gash on a little inside fade later, uh, earlier in the game, excuse me. Uh, so some bright spots here for St. Mary's, you know, some players that have, have shown uh, what they can do and that they're here to stay uh, going forward. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, Catholic Central has just had the hot hand this second half. They've taken advantage of the, the situations in which they've been in. Uh, so, you know, Catholic Central here is rolling late, and, uh, you know, the game's winding down, and, and St. Mary's is going to have to have some desperation-type plays here uh, and, and see if they can get anything going. As for that St. Mary's upcoming schedule, Toledo St. Francis de Sales next week, then two River Rouge, Toledo Central Catholic, Brother Rice, and Macomb, Dakota. You talk about a loaded schedule. Ewing to punt for CC. St. Mary's brought the house. Chance for a return for Williams. And Bryson brought down near the sidelines. It's not over. St. Mary's is still alive. They've got the ball approaching midfield. No timeouts, 155 to go. Bryson Williams last week against De La Salle. The definition of electric. Good luck tackling that. That was touchdown number one. Here, Newell finds him. Adjust to the ball, my friend, and go get to the barn. Down the sidelines he goes. He'd finish with three touchdowns. St. Mary's working the sidelines here, but he's tackled in bounds. Wide receiver, Jadzak, couldn't get out of bounds, and the clock's running. Newell throwing again. This one caught. And they do get the wide receiver out of bounds right near the sticks. That's Jadzak again. And St. Mary's moving first down. 
They learned there to get out of bounds. I'm sure the coaches had something to say. Hey, you make sure you get out of bounds after that catch. Does a good job moving the sticks, getting out of bounds, saving some time. And a flag. I'm sure you're wondering this at home like I'm wondering. I didn't get this explanation before the game. I have no idea why the flags aren't yellow. That's the first time I've ever seen a flag that's not yellow. I had that same thought in the second quarter. The, the, the line official here in front of us, I saw him throw a blue hanky, and I was like, what the heck is that? Newell in a collapsing pocket. Down he goes. Take your pick. Whole bunch of shamrocks in there. Ewing, Cheney, and Guberinich, a tag team. I mean, when it, it's going your way, it's going your way. And right now, they have to hit deep balls, right? So that takes time as a quarterback. He's going to drop back, but he doesn't have even two seconds, you know, right? The pressure, he steps up, does a good job of stepping up, but he steps up into a, a muddle of, of CC players there. And, and Stone Cheney, again, in on the tackle. Uh, really good job. He's applying a lot of pressure tonight, as he has been uh, throughout the season. That clock is not St. Mary's friend. Down the field they go. Knocked away. River Cheney catches up to the pass. They were hoping for Coates. River Cheney does a good job. First time we're calling his name. Slow to get up here. Hopefully he's okay. Brother to, to Stone Cheney. Uh, you know, those guys are having good days. You know, it runs deep in the bloodline. Uh, but, you know, nonetheless, I hope, hope you know, Cheney here gets up. Uh, River Cheney, that is, uh, as he just made a really good uh, pass deflection there. Very familiar last name around here. River and Stone's dad, Brian, excellent football player at Catholic Central. There are few men in the world who breathe Catholic Central as much as Brian Cheney. River, an awesome athlete. Runs a 4-6-40 on the track team. He's a sprinter. He's on the relay team. And good to see him get to his feet. Number 11 in blue and white, River Cheney walking to the sidelines. He also plays some hoops as well. Third down long for St. Mary's. Can I make a prediction, Evan? Sure. I'm going to say Jaden Pyden comes away with an interception here. Well, not going to happen uh, here. St. Mary's found a lot of room. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Trey Goyke. The Eaglets are alive! Never say never. The game isn't over till it's over. And like we mentioned earlier, Trey Goyke hits the, the goal 100 miles per hour, breaks through an arm tackle, makes one cut, gets north and south. I mean, he runs an 11 400 meter dash, a 4 5 in the 40, and you can just see him turn on the Jets on the sideline there. Uh, a lot of heart out of that kid, you know, fighting late in the game and giving them an opportunity here to you know, make something happen with an onside kick. St. Mary's somehow is alive. Carrick on for the extra point. It is a two point game. And now we're about to find out what kind of onside kick St. Mary's has been working on. It was a fourth down and two. And Stone. They wanted that a little bit earlier. But nonetheless, they're here in striking distance with you know 40 seconds to work. If they get an a, a onside kick here, um, you know it, it, it's high school football, man. You never know what can happen. Catholic Central calls a timeout. You just knew that a Catholic league game between Catholic Central and St. Mary's was not going to go quietly in the mid-September night. And this speaks a lot to St. Mary's coaching staff. No matter how this ends, Says a lot about St. Mary's, says a lot about Catholic Central. Two well-coached teams, evenly matched, with bigger and better things ahead of them. But for now, all they're thinking about is an onside kick that, for all intents and purposes, decides the game.
Carrick will kick it. Do they have any pixie dust? On the ground it rolls. Hopping in the air. They'll untangle the bodies. Catholic Central's got it. And Catholic Central survives. Andrew Kitchen comes up with the oh-so-important onside kick. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better kick here. I mean, a ball that's just hopping. You don't know when the big hop's coming. It usually bounces twice, and that third hop is the one that you know really messes the on team, uh, onside teams up. Uh, you know, Josh Rood, the cornerback for, uh, for Catholic Central, gets his hands on it, but it's a hot potato, right? Loses control of it. Andrew Kitchens comes in and, and cleans up the mess, secures the onside kick there. Uh, but, I mean, that thing could have gone either way. That was a, a, a scary sight for CC, uh, and St. Mary's thought they had it there for a second. Well, the ride to the finish line for Catholic Central tonight had a couple of potholes, but they get to the finish line. Catholic Central wins, knocks off St. Mary's in another one of those Catholic League games that comes right down to the last play. Shamrock's up to three and one, and another Catholic League win for Justin Sassante in year number one, leading the Shamrocks. St. Mary's falls to one and three. And Grant, as this game ends, you know, selfishly, you and I, a couple of guys who have graduated from Catholic League schools, you brother Rice, me, CC, but this applies to anyone watching this ball game who's so proud of where they went to high school and wants to give back. The way this game was played, the way it was won, the way that St. Mary's rallied back, speaks so much to Justin Sassante for Catholic Central, Jermaine Gonzalez for St. Mary's, accomplished, successful gentlemen with families of their own who are now impacting young lives on nights like this and well beyond, leading by example and breeding excellent young men and leaders going forward. Yeah, and just co your young coaches that, that are getting their start, right? You know, Gonzalez in his second year and uh, Sasante in his first. I, I mean, the play came down to a few plays uh, throughout the game, right? Uh, you know, St. Mary's had that blocked punt for a touchdown, which really helped them keep them in the game. And that could have been, a, a, if avoided, CC could have you know, kind of ran away with it. Uh, but St. Mary's held in there, you know, regardless of all the turnovers. Uh, they got heart, man, and they fight till the end. Uh, and I know they came up short tonight, uh, but they got a lot of bright spots on that team, a lot of young athletes that, that are going to have a bright future. And that's a really young team over there. I mean, you look on the roster, and it's few and far with, with how many seniors they have. Uh, and then for Catholic Central, like you said, I mean, just – they held on to it, had a great second half, and, and they earned that win tonight. Catholic Central hangs on, and they race to the student section to continue the tradition of singing Mary Alma Mater. For now, we go down to the field where Elizabeth Kuhn is standing by with Lee Krieger. I'm joined now by Lee Krieger. You guys are able to get the job done in a team effort tonight. What are your thoughts on today's performance? Um, I think we played really hard as a team defensively. I just think we all came together as a group and played our hearts out offensively. I think we got some stuff to work on, but I think we played really hard as a team and we fought. Yeah, and you had some big plays. I mean, how were you able to step up and really get the job done? Uh, just all the hard work I've been putting in with my guys over the summer. You know, all that strength training, speed training, all the time and effort we put out here really paid off today. Yeah, and you're able to get the win at home. Looking back and seeing the community support, what does that mean to you? Uh, it means everything. You know, the CC community, we call ourselves the brotherhood. You know, we're all together. We mean everything to each other, so it means a lot to me. Yeah, we'll go celebrate. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Back to you. Lee Krieger was born into the brotherhood. His dad went here. He's going here, and if uh, traditions hold true, I think Lee's going to have a kid here someday soon. Mary Alma Mater has been sung. That means Catholic Central's won another football game. They're up to 3-1. and one. St. Mary's another tight loss. Eaglets down to 1-3. and three. That does it for us, for Grant, Liz, John, our entire crew. Evan Stockton saying thanks for watching. Catholic Central squeaks one out over St. Mary's. Go have an excellent rest of your Friday and the rest of
State Champs Game Time Live is delivered by Hungry Howie's Pizza, celebrating 50 years of flavor. State Champs Game Time Live is also brought to you by Lawrence Technological University. Be curious, make magic. The future of education begins at ltu.edu. Alta Equipment, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider, proudly representing the industry's top brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time with Alta Equipment. The Construction Association of Michigan, the voice of the construction industry in Michigan. U.S. Navy, transform your life and become part of something bigger. Learn more about naval careers at Navy.com. And the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics.